Welcome back to Macro Dosing. Pleasure to have you here. This is a very special episode. We've got some guests coming to the studio. Before we get to all that stuff, I want to talk to you about our great friends over at Dat Chat. This episode is presented to you by Dat Chat. Dat Chat is a social media and messaging app that we actually use here at Barstool Sports. I think everybody here at Macro Dosing is signed up. We've got a Macro Dosing page on Dat Chat. We discuss the show. Uh, I know Arian has said, he, I think he said, like, Dat Chat is low key his shit. I think those were exact words. So Arian is always lurking on there. We're posting stuff. We're, we're talking to the listeners of Macrodosing um, on the Dat Chat app. You can join us on there. You, all you got to do is download it right now for iPhone or for Android. It's in the app stores right now. Or you can go to datchat.com slash barstool. Get more info and download Dat Chat now. Why would you want to download Dat Chat? Well, I'm glad you asked, hypothetical listener, because Dat Chat is the most secure social networking and messaging app. It gives you the ultimate level of privacy. You can message and share with people that you know the way that you normally do. For example, the shit that Billy sends me on Dat Chat, that's the stuff that will never see the light of day on the official Instagram accounts. That's never going to be on Twitter. That's the real stuff. The real uncut, straight flake, Billy football, frog porn, basically. Whoa, come on. Just frogs. Spread eagle. Um, Dat Chat is the best way that you can communicate with your friends, with your family. If you want to talk about something private with your girlfriends or guy friends, if you have a bachelorette or a bachelor party that you're trying to plan, there's no screenshotting on there. It won't let you screenshot. So download the app right now. Make sure to join our show page at Macrodosing. Talk all things Macrodosing today. Uh, and I think the, uh, the, the great part about Macrodosing, in my opinion, is that you can send all the drunk texts that you want, and then you can self-destruct all of them and pretend like it never happened. Anyways, there's a bunch of stuff you can use Dat Chat for. We love using it here. They are the presenting sponsor of Macrodosing. Download it right now, datchat.com slash barstool, datchat.com slash barstool, or you can download it for iPhone and Android in the app stores right now. Fucking chap it. Keep, get, keep note taking. You're taking notes? No, I just really want this to be... You're you're doing like minutes I'm of doing, today's show. No, I'm doing prep. I'm doing prep. Billy wants to out fact the experts you've brought in. No, Dude, I'm writing. Billy's questions. about to get just dragged by facts today. No, I'm asking questions. I'm writing questions. He's just asking I'm just questions. Be like, look, imagine I'm just someone who reads Wikipedia articles, and these are my questions. From yeah, Wikipedia. hypothetically. Imagine. Yeah, ima imagine, imagine that. Imagine, <laughs> like, just pretend that I'm a guy that reads a lot of Wikipedia and then reads also replies to bigger threads on Twitter. Billy, yeah, Billy's been um, method acting this whole time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Billy is our reply guy. I guy need guy. to quit the internet. It's so bad for my brain. Uh, we, we do have a special guest in the studio right now, actually. So we have Francis. Francis is in here. He's doing a, uh, a courtroom sketch of today's podcast, which is appropriate for the Jelaine Maxwell trial. Since they don't have cameras in that courtroom, we've only been able to see Jelaine's thick ass via, what is it, charcoal? Is it charcoal drawing? Yeah. I believe so. She's caked up? I, she might be caked up. This See, these are the questions that we need to ask Brace and Liz because they've actually been in the courtroom this whole time. Um, so they can give us the lowdown on her lowdown, if you know what I'm saying. Yo, am I bugging? Or does Coley have like a month's worth of mustache growth since the last time I seen Once it Once it goes over the lip, I look like a different person. Like it... it it, it hangs there and then I'm waiting to cut everything next week. If I, I'm in a no man's land, if I do it now, I'll be rough looking at Christmas. Like I'm already not working with a great, uh, uh palette here. So I, I got to do everything. Every, I'm on the world's time. I'm not on my own time. I would have already trimmed this, but if I, if I do it now, then Christmas is fucked. What do you use yeah. Coley? Cause I find, I find myself, well, I mean, my facial hair is in a completely different league from yours. Yours, you actually have like, a man's face as opposed to <laughs> like a, a 12 year olds over here. But I find that there's, there's like a in between phase that I get into where if I, I clip it, it's too short and then it looks like there's nothing there. And then I have to wait like a week for it to get the appropriate length. What do you trim it back to? Yeah. I mean, I've been doing a lot of trial and error over the years. Like I usually end up going too short. I just switched attachments on the, trimmer i have um and got it right for the first time so i go with the longest guard i think it's like a 12 um and that's what got it right every other time i've done like a seven and it just makes it too short and i end up looking like paul pierce like it's just 
some over here, some over here, nothing in the middle. Um, but for trimming up here, I go, I go raw blade, um, and just reverse it and just like line it up. I, I, I think of Carmelo Anthony on the Knicks that time he looked like a revolutionary, uh, like Che Guevara, um, that that's the mustache in my mind. I'm always gunning for when I'm trimming it. You go with a 12 for this. Yeah. I didn't even know that a 12 existed. That's like a, that's like a farm tractor. How long yeah, is big. a 12? Um, I'm trying. I don't. It, it's in the. Do you want me to run and get it? It's not that. <laughs> no, I've just never seen a twelve. I've only seen like fours and fives. Billy, do you shave? Yeah. How often do you shave? Uh, probably once every three days. Okay. Just when it starts to look bad. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you had the mustache coming in for a little bit. Yeah, that was pretty cool. What about you, Big T? Um, I I shave as soon as I can tell that there's facial hair growing. Yeah. Cause the the hair that grows on my face isn't facial hair. It's like the same hair that grows on my head. It looks bad. Well, that's not true. You had, you were growing a beard a little bit. Yeah, it it doesn't look good though. Some and it's different colors too. Sometimes it's brown. Sometimes it gets like a hint of auburn in there. Like it just doesn't. Mm. It doesn't mm. look right. Not burnt orange, auburn. Burnt orange is Texas. Yeah. <laughs> I was no facial hair for the longest time, and then I finally grew facial hair, and then I shaved and saw what I looked like without facial hair, and I haven't gone back. Yeah, it's shocking, isn't it? It's very shocking. You're like, who's that guy? It's jawing. You're, you're like, I don't want to look like that anymore. You're like, that guy in the mirror sucks. Yeah. I don't want to hang out with him. No. <laughs> we also got a shout out, Francis. He's technically the first ever Macrodosian. He designed the logo. Let's go. Mm. All right, Francis. Francis. He knew about the podcast before everybody, basically. Yeah. Before I even knew. Yeah. yeah that's well before Billy knew. <laughs> like probably a month and a half. <laughs> I still think Billy might not know about this podcast. <laughs> Uh, so big news coming out this weekend Hinden Hooker returning to the University of Tennessee we're supposed to get that exclusive we yeah that's true that's true I'm a little disappointed that we did not get that exclusive Arian's just more disappointed that he didn't go to the league but he's I think that we actually have ourselves to blame for this Arian I think that you probably have a lot to deal to do with it because what the fuck did I do? Well, because he knows that he can just go back to school and get a bag from you every month. He's like, I don't need to go to the NFL. I got Arian Foster giving me name, image, likeness money left and right. I, I help, I help the nigga with some groceries here and there. You know what I'm saying? I ain't giving this nigga no bag though. <laughs> yeah, he's he's going back to school. I know that. I know Big T's pretty happy about that. I am. Uh, We're gonna be preseason top twenty five next year. Spinzo, he might make some more money though. If he absolutely, sure. if he crushes it this year or this next year, he comes back, he, get, he could have elevates a, his stock. He gets in the second or first round. He could have a Kenny Pickett type season next year. That's like, like it's just when when cats come back, the odds of them in, increasing their stock just lowers. It's just not. It's just hard to do. I think it's different. Yeah. With, like a running back, a running back should go out the second you can. You should never carry the ball for free any more than you have to. But a sure. guy like him, where like he was an average quarterback at Virginia Tech, comes to UT and does really well, he can have – if he has another year like that, I think he will be drafted higher than he would have been this year. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, let's say – you know, there's just so many things that can go wrong, you know, injury aside, right, where the team don't jail, whatever the case may be. He plays bad, gets in a funk, whatever the case may be. Now your stock is nowhere. Right? Now, you, now you're not – getting drafted you know what i mean like it's just the the risk versus reward where getting your especially as a quarterback right getting your foot in the league as a quarterback that's like the best shit you could do because backup quarterback jobs are the best might be the best work you can have in the world like mm -hmm. you Correct. just fucking chill and so i i you know if you're talented enough to to, to grab one of them spots man i mean <laughs> go get it like there's no point in going for a citrus bowl my nigga. Like, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Who is the best backup quarterback you ever played with? Uh, that eventually became a starter. No, just like best backup, like never a starter. Um, it's gonna be hard with the Texans. I feel like I everyone know. got their yeah. shot. Well, no, the problem with the well, Texans is so many of the backups just became. I've started. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> well, so, well, so, well, I mean, Matt Schaub was Mike Vick's backup, actually. Mm -hmm. Um. So I don't. You probably won't count that because he was. You know, I think he made a Pro Bowl. Then came back to the Falcons and was oh, Matt Ryan's backup again. 
Yeah. And yeah. the people of Houston showed up to his front door with pitchforks and torches when he yeah, was throwing wild. pick sixes. It was, it was, bug, it was, yeah, was bugging, bro. Like, that was some, they was like some weirdo shit. Um, and we were uh, actually, he had, he had a bad season. We, we were but, talking to uh, Joe Harrington the other day for part of my take, and he was, they brought him in to Atlanta to be Mike Vick's backup when Bobby Petrino got that job. And so it was right after Matt Schaub left. So Joey Harrington, he's trying to revitalize his career. And he's like, this is the perfect landing spot. I could, I could just chill in Atlanta. I'm in no danger of taking over the starting position. I'm just going to hang out for a few years, just be a backup and then start my backup career like that. Maybe stick around the league for another like nine, 10 years, just cashing a paycheck. So he goes there with Bobby Petrino and then like two months into his tenure there, Mike Vick gets arrested. And all of a sudden, Bobby Petrino is like, wait, now I'm, I'm going to run my offense with Joey Harrington and not Mike Vick. This isn't going to work. And so the whole thing went like absolutely it sideways. sure did not. Yeah. But if you um, if you can get a good backup job in the NFL, that is a that's a sweet gig. I mean, Brian Hoyer's been another Texan starter. Brian Hoyer, just because I don't know, Bill Belichick likes the cut of his jib. I don't really know, but he's been in the league for some time now. He is a Cleveland guy, yeah. He is a Cleveland guy. You know who was uh, who was a good backup? Um, he got hurt the year we might have went deeper into the playoffs if he don't get hurt. Well, first shot got hurt, but then Matt Lyon came in and he was playing good ball. Um, but he had got hurt. I think he broke his collarbone on his throwing shoulder, a throwing arm, and um, that kind of derailed his career. Mm -hmm. But he was he was solid. Um, he was solid. Yeah, he also had like the best college experience ever. Oh, there's no question. That that was probably some of the, that's like that's like that that Miami run. Same same kind of feel. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. It's just they were. I mean, shit. Reggie Bush came out with a Kardashian. That's fire. The yeah. Kardashian, not yeah. a the. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. D D Kardashian. Yeah, a lawyer. Although, although you can make the argument that Rob Kardashian is D Kardashian. I mean, not Rob. The, who's a dad? The lawyer. Robert. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, Robert. Black yeah, China. Yeah, he, Rob Senior. Black. <laughs> His name's Black China. No, that's a that's somebody else that was involved. With the group oh, I don't I don't keep it up with it like that. I just know she was OJ's lawyer's dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, there was also there was some news that came out this weekend, more of an anniversary. I think it was the it was a 10 year anniversary of Arian buying everybody on the Texans the Letterman jackets, the varsity jackets, <laughs> and putting those can't. on to go to go up to New England where you summarily got your asses kicked. What is, what is this cap? I ain't buying nobody nothing. I heard you were like, guys, we need to do some team building experience. I know what we'll do. Let's go back to when we were playing in high school football, when we really cared about the game, when we're all having fun. Let's do it. So Friday the, Night Lights. So the story goes, um, it was Sean Cody or Connor Barwin's idea. One of the one of those two. Um, I was always an advocate of not wearing suits before games. I thought it was the dumbest shit in the world and still think it's stupid um but they were like yo let's let's just try something different and they were like connor barwin is probably one of the coolest cats i've ever met in my life he's just a cool dude good good human being and he but he was just like eccentric he had a really big personality him and sean cody was like that and so they, they came up with the idea um i like the idea and it was fly the shit was fly if we win it's it's legendary you know we just we just lost in a very bad fashion yeah yeah i I forget. I forgot the score, so I looked it up and forty something. The, ES, the ESPN article just goes. Uh, this is like a, the six year anniversary. Everyone knows the six year anniversary. It's been six years since the Houston Texans. Then eleven and one wore their infamous matching Letterman jackets to play the New England Patriots. The Texans lost forty two to 12, fourteen and haven't won a game yeah. in New England since. <laughs> See, so. that, that's what's messed up about this is like, I thought that it would be if you had asked me this morning. What game was that? Was that a regular season game? I would have said no. That's like the AFC Championship game that you guys went to the went to the varsity Letterman jacket well on. Nope. Turns out it was just like a Week Thirteen game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that. That was the personality of that team, though. It was just, it was just, we just like to have fun. I mean, we went twelve and four that year. Like we wasn't, we wasn't sorry. You know what I mean? Went to the divisional round. Yeah, it's like my dick. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and also it's kind of messed up that ESPN is like it's a sixth anniversary. I would have thought they would, you know, let's more like a ten year anniversary. They yeah, who, who does that? Who who does that? Like who 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 keeps track of a six year anything? That's that's well, the, 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 the weirdest shit in the world. 
it, this was, uh, I already exited it out, but it looked like it was like a preview for another Patriots, Patriots Texans game. Oh, um, they, play, they, they just, played this year? No, this was five, four years ago from now, the first oh, thing that pops up. Okay, okay. Uh, and there's just a picture of Connor Barwin grinning ear to ear, uh, posing like it's school picture day. Uh, hey, when I was I was fly shit. I wore my, my blue chucks with the white laces. I had a, I had a nice little, it was, I was clean. I mean, we lost, but I was clean. Fuck that. Did, did you guys wear them on the plane back? Yeah. Nobody nobody thought anything of the Letterman jackets except for people outside. Of the, you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody cared. Like, nobody was like, dude, we lost because the Letterman jacket. Like, silly as fuck. We lost because we got our ass for it. But did you wear them the next week? No, no, we never wore them again. But the coolest shit about it is that is my only Letterman jacket. I didn't have one in high school, and I didn't have one in college. So that was my only Letterman jacket. And then you remember they... Uh... They came dressed as like a SWAT team back in December of 2019. <laughs> Who did? That was a great one. The Texans. That was JJ. The Texans came dressed as like a foot. They actually look like that dude up in Detroit that does the urban combat. <laughs> we should get him on the show. Have you seen we that guy, Aaron? Should. We absolutely should. Yes, it is the funniest thing. The before. urban defense guy. It's like if somebody pulls a gun on you. Simply take your finger and stick it into the hole of the gun. <laughs> and then when they try to shoot it at your face, a bunch of gunpowder will explode on their face. And there has to be some kind of around their head several times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Billy, there has to be um, maybe you came across it. There has to be some kind of like list of stupid shit we've made famous. Huh. Like stupid people or I'm not calling that guy stupid, but just like that's a dumbass reason to be famous for him. And, but he's gonna have a career off this shit now. That's the funny part. On this show or just in general on the internet? In general, bro. We have not made anybody famous oh, on this show. Know. But uh yeah, that guy's actually started to lean into it. And I think he was at the uh Pistons game. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's gonna be a celebrity. We just <laughs> that's what America's best for is making stupid shit famous. He's now collabing with other TikTokers and stuff. He's it's so good. funny. He he is like he is the salt bay of of martial arts he's assault bay <laughs> that's what he is Ass assault man that's what we should call him <laughs> so he's totally shaking his head like i i retire from this podcast that's <laughs> no, kind of a that's I, a crap watching a crap watching you piece that puzzle together was something to <laughs> he's the fucking man though isn't he like that one that one clip where there's five guys attacking him. he's like watch how simple it is to escape from five individual assailants and then he just starts like shuffling sideways around the room like he's a border collie he's a, a shepherd dog yeah. yeah yeah he's like hurting the sheep that are trying to attack him i mean he makes he makes steven seagal's videos look like some serious hardcore combat shit you know the ones where people just sprint at steven seagal and he touches them and they do a flip how like how has no one and i'm not saying i want this to happen i want that very clear how has no one actually caught him in the streets and like he's in detroit i feel like this could happen like how has no one made him prove this these theories in real life yet yeah no there's got to be like I hope it don't come to that, man. I think because I, they, like I said, I don't want Aaron. I made it very clear I do not want that to happen. Paulie's calling for violence. I think it's because they like him so much because the tactics he's showing is exactly how not to do it. So yeah, he's, he's, he's he, almost, he might he's work for them. them. Yes. That's a good point, Avery. He <laughs> may work for yeah. He's, he's actually working for you. He's working for them. This is all the ways not to. Yo, not to totally pivot, but the biggest story over the weekend dish was Nancy Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> throat goat. She came out as the throat goat. Oh my god, that shit had me Hang rolling. On, what? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this Big is T. great. What? All right, all right, all right, all right. Talk about trickle down let economics. Me, let me, let me, let me, Hang on. Let me, let me set. The, let me set the stage. Let me set the stage. Please. I thought Deep Throat was in the Nixon administration. So, so Oaks. So Abby Shapiro. <laughs> Abby Shapiro is Ben Shapiro's sister. For people that don't know who Ben Shapiro is, you lucky motherfucker. But he's a right-wing political pundit who um, is hilarious on all of in all courts. But he has a sister named Abby Shapiro who has a music video that's fucking hilarious also. This all came to me in one day. Um, anyway, she puts out a tweet about Madonna at 64 or 63. And it's her being extremely provocative in a, in a picture or whatever the case may be. Uh, she got a, she got a nipple out and all of this in very revealing clothing. And then uh, in juxtaposition with a picture of Nancy Reagan standing with her nice family, right? All she, and Abby Shapiro says, would you rather be trashy or classy? 
And boy, did she not think that one through. <laughs> Jeez. Because because people pulled receipts of Nancy Reagan's past. And I will preface this with, I am all for women exploring their sexuality and being promiscuous, but it didn't make the point that she thought it was because wow. Nancy Reagan apparently was known for going down on dudes a lot in Hollywood. And and I, she's, she, was, she was very promiscuous. Um, not only that, she was very excited about the AIDS epidemic. Um, there's a whole bunch of litany of, uh, of, of things that she did politically that was uh, abhorrent. But like Madonna was like outspoken during that time and and banging for people uh, to to get um, the awareness raised, and which was a, a a controversial take to have at the time, right? Which is really bold. And so it, she just got roasted because it was it was one of the most that was she was hilarious. she was the blowjob queen of California. We actually we talked about that on this show. We brought Did that we? up. Yeah, that was like a couple months ago, yeah. I think, right? I Googled, This should not be news to you, Big T. I vaguely recall that now. I Googled Nancy Reagan, and this publication sucks, so I won't say what it is, but the headline's hysterical. Why are people tweeting that Nancy Reagan was the, quote, throat goat? And then the deck under it says, rumors about former first lady Nancy Reagan having the best blowjob game in Hollywood's MGM <laughs> backlot have resurfaced. Yeah, so it was from it was from a biography of Nancy Reagan that came out a while ago. And uh, yeah, she. I think that's how she got introduced to Ronald Reagan. I think he was, he was feeling a little blue, and uh, they hit up Nancy, and she was feeling a little blue too. Here's a tweet: My Nancy game so good, you want Reagan consciousness. <laughs> that's a tweet. Well, that's a hell of a pun right there. So. <laughs> I think we said on on PMT yesterday. What was it? Tyrancy Reagan Matthew had a nose all the way down to the ball again, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, but what, what I love about Twitter is it's truly like, you're just holding your phone and you, you have this door on your phone to a world and you open it and you never know what's going to be on the other side of that door. And I think it was Friday. I can't remember if it was Friday or Saturday, but I opened it and it, sometimes it sucks being 10 minutes late to something that's already been happening. <laughs> This time I disagree. I think it was great to come in and see what had already transpired and be right in the thick of it. You don't have to be waiting around to yep. get. Sometimes people are tiptoeing around. They don't want to get it too crazy. But no, people people saw this and they were like, "Oh man, what a what a weekend this is going to be." Joey Langone had the best tweet. It was like oh Daniel Jones needs to see a has to see a neck uh, therapist this week, and then it was just him with Nancy Reagan, <laughs> neck specialist. Yeah, neck yeah. specialist. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this one that just got dropped in the group chat is pretty good, too. Nancy Reagan on the Imgen lot, 1949, colorized. And it's it's Elaine from Seinfeld doing the thing where she thinks she's having a seizure. Oh, <laughs> and all God. that shit's coming out of her mouth. <laughs> yeah, I saw a vile one of uh, Angelica from Rugrats. I think one time they I spilled a bunch one. of cookies. You saw that one? <laughs> yeah, she's like, rum, rum, rum. <laughs> I don't care. And then she comes up and she's like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I man. think that's I think that's a good thing. I think that if you're the president of the United States, I think it's it's probably helpful for your self esteem, for your general mood, if your wife gives the best blowjob in the country. And yeah. I'm not being sexist. I think that also if it's a female president, if you've got the ultimate clam gobbler as the first dude, <laughs> that's probably a good thing too, right? Clinton would have had such a smoother ride if 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 uh hillary was the the goat nancy just hillary. should have stayed on as queen and so it's just like whoever's president she's gonna work with you she's gonna be your, your assistant <laughs> this is our that's it's a government funded expenditure yeah like consensually obviously you know <laughs> provide that she wanted to stick around it's not yeah. like she enjoyed it <laughs> what the fuck the oh my orifice. It's, it's so it's so it's so it's so wild because like it's like yeah. Nancy Nancy Reagan has you know a whole you know surviving family members and they woke up one day on Twitter it's like yo my mom was wilding my grandma was wilding <laughs> and they for no reason like yeah all because someone else brought her up like like yeah. oh that fucking classically Abby had to had to run her trap oh man hey Big T you got to look at her music video dog. We'll Abby Shapiro. That. Abby Shapiro has a music video. And it's like, you got a little bit of bread. Bro, that shit was filmed with like a flip phone camera. That shit, wow. <laughs> that shit's just bad. Production bad. 
The, everything's pretty bad though. And she could say she could hold a note, but she'd be flat on some of the notes. It's it's pretty it's up. a pretty it's a pretty bad song. Huh? I see I it's see fire up. <laughs> I see the story goes know. on really and Carmen Habanera. Which one is it? What? She's got two songs he's saying. This is from is it oh. from like two weeks ago? Oh, I don't I didn't dig into her catalog. I just somebody <laughs> somebody somebody tagged me in it and sent it to me. Um she she was at, there was a bunch of leaves. I don't know. Okay, this might be it. I just I wanna say I wanna say for the record that Madonna's beautiful, gorgeous for how old is she? 60, 63? Nah, she gotta be older that. than that. She's older than that. She's Maybe. no, no, no. That's not a bonk, Mad Dog. I said she's gorgeous. Gorgeous can mean anything. I, I've called 63. a mountain. I've called a mountain gorgeous before. Sixty-three, yeah. She's sixty-three years old. Yeah. Why do I feel like she's been around for sixty years? Like, she was she, one of the most famous people alive for a, a lot of her life. I so. mean, she got, she got it. She got in it early. Then okay. Like, she she, yeah. like an, she also team, reinvents like herself a lot, so it feels like she's. You've seen so many iterations of her. Yeah, that um, that uh, that woman's march speech was kind of cringe, though. I don't know if I, was that when she had the British accent. Uh, I don't know if she had a British accent. She was just saying a lot of. I don't remember her verbatim, but she was saying a lot of wild shit. Sometimes she like she adopts a weird British accent. Maybe that was back in the eighties or nineties. I don't know if she's still doing. Oh, that. that was. I feel like she goes in and out. All right, Big T's watching classically Abby. What is he? What does he think? Uh, I'm, is I'm he... not overly impressed. You're impressed at all is what I'm interested in. No, I, I'm not. Isn't she like okay. a classically trained opera singer? That's what she, that's what she claims. A lot of do you know what I noticed about a lot of cats? Like you could uh, speak to this too, PFT. Is like what a, a lot of like musically trained cats, like um, technically trained and went to school for that shit. They I don't say a lot, but like a lot of the times I noticed just in my experience with music is. They have a hard time composing their own shit. Like they can, they they, they have perfect pitch. They can play shit like that's written. But like when they try to write shit or they try to create shit, they have some. A lot of my experiences that they have trouble creating their own mm -hmm. uh, pieces. It's, have it's you true. noticed that? It's it's a different it's a different muscle. The no brains way. are yeah. trained into a cage, so they yeah. can't be creative. So yeah, what what happens is they they have they learn all the rules. Right. Mm. And then they don't know, they think too much about the rules and not enough about just creating and making stuff that sounds good. And that's, that makes sense. I, 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 make, I make a lot of my music with my boy and he went to college for, he majored in music. Right. And um, I was taking piano lessons a while back and I was like, why don't you brush up on your theory, man? I feel like you can polish it up. He's like, oh, hell no. I was like, why not? He's like, I don't, I don't want to know anymore. I know what I need to know. Like, I, I want to be able to create. Like, and that's what exactly what you're saying. It's like once you once you learn that shit, you get locked into it. It makes a lot of sense. Right? Well, I feel like you lose part of the emotion of it too. Like a lot of like Adele technically isn't like a perfect singer. She she's things, if I remember correctly, with her throat and not with like her chest. But no one's gonna try and correct that shit because it's it's beautiful and it's wildly emotional. Like at the second, even like the Silk Sonic album that came out, I like the album, but it's it's too perfect like it, it doesn't have like the well i'm saying like sonically like that don't you uh, mean? like in the 70s or in the 60s when it, the eras it's trying to emulate like there was not this perfection to it it was fucking everyone was too high on cocaine for perfection and these guys are still on the cocaine but they they have yeah. too many tools at their disposal right now where they can like clean up stuff and it's like yeah quantizing it, shit yeah you're right a, a, yeah. Lot, a lot of those records were cut in one take like live just one one take and that shit was impressive i mean fucking september just trails off at the end because they clearly just kept playing for it. Earth, Wind, Fire just kept playing for another half hour, probably. Yeah. And they're like, all right, if we're going to put this on the radio at a certain point, we need to end we this. Gotta, we got to stop. We got to stop playing music. I've always wondered about the trail offs because I feel like we're losing the trail offs. You don't, you don't hear too many of them these days. And it was like probably a good 50% of singles that would come out between 1970 and 1995 didn't have an ending to the song. The engineer just at some point was like, okay, we're going to start taking it down here during your last guitar solo. It was always like some 80s band, like Rat, the guitar snuck into the studio late at night after the song had already been recorded. They're like, I'm gonna put another guitar solo on at the end. They're like, okay, <laughs> let's fade this out. That was, a, that was a thing that happened all the time. You know what song I think 
even though it might not be the best song ever, I don't think a song like it will ever be made again. Cashmere by Led Zeppelin. Just like no one will ever be able to do something like that again. Dun, 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 it's dun, one of those, those ones that just goes try. on forever. Who are those kids? That Greta, uh, Van, Greta Fleet Van Fleet, Fleet. They can't. It's yeah. almost, like Greta Van Fleet almost sounds like cheap, like poppy compared to anything Led Zeppelin's ever put together. For sure. Uh, my, my joke yeah. was that they're doing an impression of Zeppelin. Yeah. Which isn't an original joke, but it's true. It's, but like, it's like Weird Al. It's at, it sounds like a Weird Al cover of Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Like that song is a tr- like a trip and a half. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They're good musicians. Actually, Greta Van Vliet versus Led Zeppelin is a perfect encapsulation, Aaron, of what you were talking about, which is people that learn music theory versus people that are songwriters. Mm -hmm. So like Greta Van Van Vliet, musically, probably as good as Led Zeppelin. I know that sounds weird being like Jimmy Page compared to some kid nowadays, but with all the different lessons that you can take, kids are getting way more advanced technically at instruments there's probably not a riff that jimmy page played on a led zeppelin album that the guy in, v- in greta van vliet could not play right now if he just sat and practiced mm. it and copied it but yeah. it sounds complete there's no soul to it so you're missing right. all of what made led zeppelin great and also at the time there was no band that sounded like led zeppelin they were taking like british british rock mixing it with like some dirty ass deep south blues and that's something that like they they the excitement of them creating a new genre of music that totally like supersedes anything that just like a, a Led Zeppelin cover band would be able to bring to the table. I'm waiting for, um, that's a great point. I didn't want to just not acknowledge. That's a good point, man. But, uh, Thanks, Harry. I'm, I'm waiting for any, any time I'm waiting for like the next sound, right? Because I feel like we've been on this trap, uh, drums feel for, good 10 years now and i'm 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 thinking it's time to to pivot somewhere else like you know each, each era kind of has like its own identity and its own sound like this trap like this trap feel has has infiltrated all genres right like um, yeah and it's i think it's time to move on man like mm-hmm. and maybe that's just me but i don't know if we will though cuz like 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 to your point songs are way shorter now and it's because the attention span of people is way shorter now. And so it doesn't even make any sense fiscally, which is why I always argue art should be, it should have nothing to do with money. Um, that's my utopia though. But b- because it's so saturated, right? You're like, you have artists making music to try to please an algorithm and shit. Mm. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. fucking gross. And so it really waters down the quality. So when you look, talk about bands in the 60s and 70s and that it took years to put compositions of songs together, you know, just tweaking it, make sure that quality control sessions. Like now it's like, how many songs can you put out? Spotify was talking about actually um, penalizing artists that don't put out music yeah. Uh, and a certain oh, yeah. certain amount of time, and I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, that is the dumbest shit you yeah. can possibly do. Hella artists when to push something out. You dumb as hell. I think maybe the the next wave is going to be artists that just write songs exclusively for TikTok. No, so, so like exactly. thirty second long songs. <laughs> so no, seriously. So oh I was God. talking to an up and coming rapper. His name's Wayne Jetsky. Just about his mm-hmm. career and I'm all this stuff. With his catalog. Uh, and basically he knows he likes music he wants to make good music but he's like the only way i'm going to get noticed if i make these shorter streamable songs that hopefully get put into a tiktok trend and that'll be the fastest way to come up yep. like i he he doesn't want to but he has to to like please the uh wayne jeski is a another uh, another employee at barstool yes. sports and he's a good friend of mine but like he's trying to make good music but he says that in order to be relevant he has to try to make these shorter streamable songs well that the problem is he's not trying to make good music he's trying to be relevant which is going at it the wrong way but in he's order looking to at the end instead of the beginning right but in the beginning if you have one of these little like uh songs that get caught in the algorithm you're gonna get relevancy and then you know like like old town road like it, old town that, road was an anomaly and if anyone's trying to chase that they're not gonna get it Right, but that's a good song. I don't know. That's a good. It's song. it's kind and of it's amazing. a good song. Yeah, that's part of the good problem. Song. Like these others, like Sada. Do you know who Sada Baby is? No. Right. He his biggest song was on TikTok. Fucking the Demilios were posting it. 
it did not like he didn't latch on with you because that song went super viral like he's already still big with the audience that knows him but it did not catch on with the white teens on tiktok because of his one song like it's not it's not it has no staying power yeah. yeah, I think I think we need to tap into Billy's brain, and Billy, you need to invent the next genre of music. Hmm. You don't have to play any instrument. Just tell me, like, what does it sound? Arian's like to you? face. <laughs> me? Yeah. What does it sound like? I don't know. It's something that just like gets you going. All right. So it's, <laughs> so it's fast paced, probably heavy. Well, it depends. A lot of BPM. I only listen to like, so. Yeah, I lose headphones a lot, so I haven't been listening to a lot of music on the way <laughs> so to work. So it's got to be really loud. So man. the only time I listen to music is when I'm working out. Okay. And just like, yeah, I'm well, honestly not the best person. No, I want, I, this. I, I really, want really to write. I want to write a 30 second song just based off. Well, like I'm doing a police sketch, but for a song. But <laughs> so like, that's what Billy's doing. thing is, I watch a lot of TikTok for work, just like to you know see the trends, see what works. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that short stuff that's very catchy gives you the dopamine rush, the scientific aspect of what beats or what, you know, transitions cause your brain to, like, release chemicals and make you feel good. That's exactly what everyone's chasing. So All that's right. how you'd have to do it. So you want some dopamine, something that you could work Just out high to. high dopamine. What if you called it, like, come get some? Would that be <laughs> a cool name for it? Would that get you amped so or is that too much? When Eminem, when Eminem, so old Eminem, like, I mean, meaning like the new, like Berserk, for example, Eminem was trying to capture like Till I Collapse vibes mm -hmm. and like that, like, let's go, like, let's go hard, like, let's go crazy in his new songs. And it was almost too scripted to derivative. try to get that, that yeah. it didn't really catch that old, you know, you guys, my music stuff, no, I, I really... It's, it's I want to write a custom it's song for Billy. It's embarrassing. Music is subjective. Like your yeah. take on the music industry is your take on the music. Industry. You you consume how you consume. Everybody yeah. consumes differently. It's, yeah. it's not a bad take. It's just. But for ex take. for example, how you say that everyone's sort of gotten that trap beat, like the new Morgan Wall and stuff, kind of has that more hip hoppy backtrack as opposed to some new country. Morgan who? Morgan Wall and he's canceled. It's a whole big thing. But if you sure listen to that. his music never wants canceled he was yeah i think he was the number one streaming artist of last year right i don't know yes, separate the artist from the art no i'm just saying then, like yeah. that's not canceled we can then. debate he's still making the most okay, money I don't care. He's, I'm, I'm not supporting what he did no 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 nobody was what whoa, do chill I mean, out, Billy. nobody was saying I, I, that to her yeah i'm out the loop i have no idea right, who morgan, was morgan he, wallen was he was uh intoxicated and he was screaming at somebody in his front yard calling them the n-word he's white White yeah. guy, yeah, country. What's artist. up? What's up? What's up with I was just playing Valorant, right? And it was just dudes <laughs> that was like dropping hella M bombs. I'm like, what? 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 What is it about that word that y'all want to say so bad? Like nobody ever like lobbies to say wetback. Like nobody's like, why can I say wetback? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why can't, why can't I say like? What? Like it's just y'all love saying nigga, bro. It's the weirdest shit in the world. You know, I know what it is. I know what it is. It's like, because hey. it's because we're fucking cool. That's what it is. Black people are cool as shit. <laughs> And we make everything look cool. And the slur that y'all used to call us now is the term of endearment. And now y'all want him. It. It's weird. It's true. It's I could, I'd only say this on this show, especially with PFT sitting there. But there is a good case you guys appropriated that word from us. <laughs> <laughs> I almost left the call just now. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's the ultimate cookie jar. People know they're not supposed to reach into. People like it's doing it so, and seeing if they get fucking electrocuted. It's so wild, though. It's like we such should, a. I want to say it. You say it. <laughs> we should just do an experiment with the next generation. Just make up a word and be like, "Hey, you guys Can't aren't. You guys aren't allowed to say futon anymore. Futon's an <laughs> awful word. It's hurtful." And just see like how many kids sneak around like sending videos to their friends on Snapchat of them being like, "Yo, futon," you know, like <laughs> like because it's forbidden fruit. Forbidden fruit tastes the sweetest, man. Mm -hmm. Show whatever we should just tell the next generation kids, whatever you kids do, if I catch you doing math, I swear to God, <laughs> you're out of my house. And just see like if kids like secretly get really into doing calculus and shit. Bruh, my my daughter, yeah, you know, I fancy myself pretty up on, you know, my kids' homework and stuff. Like I know what they're doing. Like she came up to me and and it just I was like, I'm out. Like, I, I'm officially, you've passed me mentally in the math department. 
and it's 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 not even hard shit. So she started talking about the the Y um Y equals MX plus B, like that stuff. And mm-hmm. I just couldn't remember how to do any of it, dog. Like and it was like it's over. It's like I my daughter's smarter than me in math now. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Yeah. Those I, I don't remember any equation. I don't remember the quadratic formula. Y equals MX plus B. I think it's the slope, slope intercept yes. thing. Slope yeah. intercept form. Yeah. Math is pointless. I think that's the dumbest shit you probably could have ever said. We've got calculators. You want to know how many times I use math in a year? Outside of watching sports on TV. You're a podcaster. Yeah. I use it zero wow. times. Zero times a year. The old, and I, I will discount like watching sports on TV when I'm doing the math to be like, how many points do we need to hit the over or something like that? And I'll also discount like when I'm, if I'm doing a check at a restaurant and I have to do remedial addition, but I still fuck that up. I use math. <laughs> I use math never. I'm, I never so, use math ever since I don't to, use to, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. No, I mean, I was just gonna say, since I don't use math that much in my day to day, sometimes I like try to do some mad minutes just to make sure I still got it to keep that muscle exercised. Yeah. You do low key math. I do low key math. I try to do mental math in my head. 18, I got, I got a 18 plus I got a mental math. Yeah. I got a mental, I got a mental math app on my phone. Uh, just every now and then, just to keep, you know what I mean? It, it keeps you sharp. It's like, I don't know. But to say math is stupid is, is stupid. That's stupid what you just said. Math is very... Oh, now Now we're in some kind of fucking... <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, math Rabbit just... Hole. Math, it just never made sense to me. I, I was never... It's a was, different language. Yeah, a different language entirely. Bro, but, math is fundamentally responsible for your entire career. It's also responsible for the atomic bomb, so... Mm-hmm. True, there the you go. the the duality of life, my brother. <laughs> Math will destroy the world one day. It won't be my problem. <laughs> I'll be like, I, oh, I warned you. There was a there was a dope ass um uh, invention I think NASA just made, where they it's like this. It was small on a small scale, but like it, it it's like um it's like a molding claw that that can pick up rocks with any kind of surface, and it's really dope. And the dope shit about it is like. It's like a template for like if there's ever like an asteroid that, that wants to hit us, like maybe we can like have something hook up to it and pull it away. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. I just found <laughs> out you can't drink beer in space. Why? Because we, the carbonation. That, the carbonation doesn't work. Carbon you can't drink like soda or anything? Yeah, it just turns to foam. Well, I'm not going. Yeah. Science, figure that out. Mm-hmm. But liquor's fine, right? Wine. Yeah. Non-carbonated beverages are fine. A lot of wine. Okay, cool. Oh, I wonder. So you can't like decant wine in space, because this there's actually you could aerate the fuck out of wine because it just floats. But there's no oxygen to get but in. But there's no oxygen. Oh, but I'm thinking like in the space station. Oh no! I, yeah, yeah. I don't understand. Any fire? D- when yeah. you decant wine, you're just you're pouring it into a different vessel so that it gets. It's the air bubbles, which releases more of the scent. Is that it? It's they. It oxidizes it. I don't know what that means scientifically, but basically, it it like exposing it to the air changes the flavor, and it changes the um. I don't want to say the makeup, but it just it, it makes it a little bit more rich. It, it locks the age. aromas. Got it. Got it. Um. All right. Well. You guys ready to maybe get started talking about the Jelaine Maxwell trial and the whole Jeffrey Epstein stuff? I think I'm excited. It's I don't a know. Very professional introduction. We got to figure out how we're going to approach this because there's a lot. Well, I, I think that so the people that we're going to bring in, they're going to be here in just a couple minutes. Um, it's Brace and Liz from the True Anon podcast. And so I've been listening to them on and off for a few years now. They've been talking about Jeffrey Epstein and, and Jelaine Maxwell uh, before. Epstein got arrested. They, this has kind of been their thing that they've kind of dove into and uh, very funny people. I think that we just start. I want to get some some background information from just so that you guys can like get to know him a little bit in case you're not familiar. Uh, Brace has a really interesting, weird story. So I'd like to get him to talk about that a little bit and then um, and then get into it with, with him and Liz uh, and find out, you know, what they've seen while they're up here. Uh, and just approach it from the standpoint of we're, we're blank slates, right? So just, we'll be your sponge. Just educate us. 
Uh, that's kind of what I had in mind. I'm, I'm I have no this ain't my bag, so I'm I'm a pure listener on this one. Like, Aaron, I'm gonna ask questions and stuff. What, go ahead. This might be the first the first guest that we've had on the show that's more left wing than you are. That's gonna be hard to do. I was gonna say. I I th- that's, that's, I mean, Brace went overseas and and fought with the Kurds. Are they, oh, they left wing? Well, put there are elements of the Kurdish army, and he'll get into it that are communist, and there are elements that aren't. Um, but yeah, he's he's a, a communist that has fought ISIS. By virtue of this being a podcast that you listen to, I believe you that they are incredibly left wing. Thanks, I just thanks don't know if it. it's more so than Aaron. No, I, they should have a live off. I no, think that's the only oh, way to yeah. settle oh, this. D- don't use the L word. So, don't so, use the L so word. So they're they're when, not when libs. you're when you're when you're left wing, like really left wing. A li- you we view um, liberals like we view Republicans. Like they're in the same boat. They just wear different hats. Yeah. See, Big T, you're actually. I think you're gonna like these people. I think oh, that is this you, like the I think that you have way more in common with the leftists than you no ever question. would with the libs. The libs, I think. <laughs> We can all agree that that libs Jesus can be Jesus is a co- Jesus is a communist. I feel like these guys are a little more like comrades almost. They're very that's, funny that's, people though. You like them. You like them. We've had some right wing people on this show. We're gonna have some leftists on this who? show. Pompliano. Well, yeah, but <laughs> we're talking <laughs> guests. <laughs> Pompliano, he he's well, like well, well, as libertarian I, as it gets. Oh, you you invite somebody. You invite somebody. We got to get get you the most rightest fucking wrapped in an American I don't, flag. I consume I consume the liberal media so I know what the fake news is saying so you know how to refute it. Quick question, we got to make sure these guys aren't uh CIA plants. Like how do how do we Why? disconcern that? Just like, you know, just we'll figure ask them. Ask them. Yeah. No, no, the the two and on. True and on. True and on. True and on is about Two and sorry. Two and on. Talk about Billy I feel like I feel like Billy. Are you a little intimidated right now? Because they this is what they do, and you they no. they, they, outfa- they, they they about to they about to outfact you. We right? walked no, no, in I, I, no I'm now the questions guy. Oh, yeah. I, I brought the questions. Okay. Here you go, Big T. You gotcha. probably love gotcha. Glenn Greenwald, right? You're probably a big fan of his. I don't know who that is. Oh, okay, never mind then. Uh, is did he used to work for the New York Times? He he. Worked I feel like for, I've heard his name. He I just don't know anything about a him. A number of of uh, like coastal elite papers, but now he's like he's on Tucker all the time. He's, uh, I think he lives down in Brazil and he reports on the fascist regime down there, but founded a law firm concentrating on first amendment litigation. I can get down with that. Yeah. Yeah. He, you and him run in the same intellectual circles and that guy likes the true and on people. Interesting. So yeah, I think you'll actually like him. I think, Oh, I've seen this guy. I know who he is. If we go, if, if everyone goes into it with an open mind, I think that you'll at the very least think that they're funny and they're informative and they know their shit when it comes to the Epstein that whole mess because like i said they've been covering ex- it for years yeah i'm excited about it uh because um it's like they've been doing this before it was like popular to talk about mm-hmm. epstein right mm-hmm. and so they were ahead of the curve so they they really know you know they did do due diligence they can lay you know they can give us a accurate timeline and kind of lay the foundations of it i'm, I'm excited for it because like, i don't really miss my like i'm not wasn't into the super sex trafficking ring like it's i know it's a thing but um, yeah, I'm excited for it too. Before we start the interview with Trunon, let me tell you about something. My back has been killing me recently. Thankfully, Homedics has sent all of us massagers. Homedics has been actually saving my life by helping me massage my back, which has been killing me. You know, I'm a former uh, collegiate athlete. My body's starting to catch up with me. Homedics is helping me stay ahead of the game and not having a broken down body by the time I'm 27. Let me tell you, the company was founded in 1987. They were founded in Detroit. They helped make people's lives better by establishing home medics. They're the established leader in wellness and home health innovations backed by traditional wisdom and modern technology. Plus, they have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating, so they are a brand you can rely on. Join the millions of customers who trust the home medics family to take care of theirs. I actually love my home medics personal massager. It, you know, gets the knots right out of my back if you have like hamstring quad stuff definitely worth getting home edics so especially with macrodosing you can go to homedicscom dash dosh and use the promo code dose you'll receive a free portable phone sanitizer when you buy a hundred dollars more in massage products that's a 60 dollars value that's h-o-m-e-d-i-c 
s.com/dose and use the promo code dose for your free portable phone sanitizer with a $100 massager purchase. It's definitely worth it. Go to Home Edics. And that, this is also when it's stated that some people at the time said that he was an intelligence agent. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think too that like it's not just that he I think him understanding fraud is like absolutely 100% correct because later on in his career like we see documentation it actually is in the Paradise Papers which is the mm-hmm. like you know lesser known w- one of the huge document dump that happened one of the many papers yeah <laughs> so, it's um, always a good catch he, when it's it's got like a proper name to yeah, it yeah, yeah totally yeah, yeah. Papers, all yeah, that. yeah yeah so he was like caught setting up a ton of shell companies for some of his clients and himself all throughout like Panama and the Virgin Islands and whatever, basically like tax havens. And so what he was really good at was basically say, like saying, okay, I'm going to take your money, hide a bunch of it in all these different places, which is going to allow us to then make it grow and not pay taxes on it. And so it's kind of like you understand all these like fraudulent moves, which then you're able to use to your client's advantage, mm-hmm. AKA, they're not going to notice that we're doing this because I know this is what they look for over here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So did he? Was he the one that started the rumor? Like, hey, I hear Jeffrey Epstein's in the CIA. Like, he, well, he was I mean, telling that, people that to like boost his clout, or I, is that so, somebody else? I mean, the the thing about him is that like the the reports are that he would tell people that he worked for the CIA and that he also recovered money from people, like from warlords, which mm-hmm. is like. I'm I'm not really sure how you're doing that. Like, you yeah. know, I've never met a warlord, but I've met like. <laughs> Which also, if you I'm haven't not, met a warlord. Yeah, I mean, I've met guys who, like, would be warlords. And, like, how are you going to get money? He has the, the, he's a warlord. I think you just need a bigger Toyota truck. It, exa- with like yeah, a, exactly. A bigger but, mounted machine. But, like, so back. it's, you know, it, exactly. And, like, that, it's, like, it, it's so this guy, I mean, he is placing himself in this, like, I mean, you know, the the, the way that, like, sort of the, the, the sort of hidden world of politics goes in, in, in the world is like, you know, a complex series of like, yeah, political and military arrangements, but also financial arrangements mm-hmm. and being a player in that is an important thing. Yeah. And it's like, if he's good at that, if he knows how to do that, if he knows how to hot, you know, if so, say someone in the government wants to move some money to some guy, you know, in so a warlord in Somalia or something, Epstein knows how to do that through these different like you know like offshore shell companies ba- exactly. and offshore banks. Yeah, totally. that's a really useful skill to have. Absolutely. Yeah. So that kind of answers one of my biggest questions, which is just what what is a financier besides just a red flag? Do not hang out with this person. If somebody's like, I'm a financier, to yeah. me that tells me you do some evil shit. Yeah, hundred percent. That's like what VCs called themselves before they rebranded, like a financier or yeah. something like, it's like that. Vaguely French. Yeah, just sounds like fancier well it's like you fund both like you like own the railroads but you also own the guys that like kill the people who work on the railroads and stuff and right. it's like <laughs> right if you're a financier yeah that means like you're also invested in like somebody a, a, a great stock of machine guns yeah pinkertons yes, yes. pinkertons yeah yeah, yeah yeah yes you you like refuse to let the pinkertons unionize against you exactly you yeah, have yeah, pinkertons yeah. for your pinkertons yes. yeah. yeah 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 and exactly. so yeah, I mean Epstein. It, the thing is, though, like who his actual clients were, besides the ones, the big ones that we know about, still a mystery. Mm-hmm. You know, we actually we don't know who a lot of these guys were, especially early on. But he was he was accumulating money at this mm-hmm. point, getting wealthier and wealthier. Big T, you got any questions so far? I'm just I'm just learning. Okay, we'll get into the Clinton stuff. I, soon, I got I, I got a question. Why do you, why do why do we not know uh, who his clients were? Because it's all secret and yeah. a lot of them won't come forward. The ones we know about, the, one of the big ones that we know about that we really, no one's really looked into, which is not a surprise, is Larry Summers. Yes. Uh, Larry Summers was a big client of Jeffrey Epstein's, and yet we don't really know how much money he was managing or really the extent of that. No one, uh, everyone's done their job by not looking into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the big ones we know about were like Leon Black and especially Leslie mm-hmm. Wexner, mm-hmm. Leslie, sure. which is a guy. You right. Be, mm. wasn't it? I don't right. Know. Le- yeah. Leslie, Leslie. Wexler. He he ran like a clothing company, right? Victoria's Secret. Right? Not just yeah. a clothing. Well, I'll let the let the lady take this. But. Well, yeah, he was the owner of the limited brands. Yes. Yeah. Um, which was both Victoria's Secret, obviously, is the big one. But the limited limited two for our mm-hmm. lady listeners out there. Yeah, that's right. Mad Dog knows. Yeah, mm-hmm. she knows. Um. Yeah, so huge like mall brand conglomerate, but Victoria's Secret obviously being the the big showpiece of the brand 
machine. Yeah, and he is he is a Midwestern billionaire, which is <sighs> yeah. I gotta say, in the billionaire hierarchy, if you're one in the Midwest, the most evil, scary guy. Yeah, yeah. totally, especially Ohio. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, Matt Dog, that's actually the the owner of your Cleveland Browns, Jimmy Haslam. Ran, Mount Haslam has nothing to do with this. He's a Midwest billionaire that ran Pilot he's not, Flying J and he's defrauded. He's from fucking Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, he's actually a Southern billionaire. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah. Well, he's in. He's he's in so he's a carpet now. bagger. Yeah. Yeah, and he's run the Tennessee football program into the ground too. He's a real some bitch. Mm. Yeah. He uh, he it's defrauded. I think like hundreds of millions of dollars out of, uh, out yeah. of truckers through fake rebates. He sure did. Yeah. Fake rebates. Yeah. Fake rebates. He would be like, yeah, if you drive X amount of miles and you fill up at my station and you know you're a you loyal. Yeah, 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 We're yeah. going to send you money at the end of the year. Doesn't send and it. They just never sent money. Incredible and they just scam. Took, they took all that money and then they, just, they gave it to all their vice presidents. And then it was you can tell that it's a real rich person mm. shit scam when yeah. when uh, the FBI invest, investigates you, they have enough evidence to convict you, and they say, "Tell you what, we just won't take you to trial if you literally just write us a check." Yeah. Oh, and yeah, that's, that's all the, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. pay a fine, and we yeah. won't go to trial. Yeah. I don't know how that's any different from bribery. No, it, no, it, it is. is. Yeah. Especially because yeah. a lot of the times, like, they'll fine you and it's like the money doesn't go to the people that you stole the money from. No, it, it like goes to the FBI yeah. to buy cool new gear. Yeah. Yeah. SWAT repelling ropes. Yeah. D, D Haslam was once told me she liked my necklace. Oh, then they sound like lovely people. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's if there's 13. any <laughs> enterprising young sports journalists listening, they should, hot little tip. I would spend some time looking into Leslie Wexner's ties to Ohio State because I think oh. they're there. Okay. Whoa. Mad Dog, is there, you're raising your hand. Do you want to look into those ties? I know the ties. Go on. So he, the Ohio State Medical Center and the Ohio mm -hmm. State Hospital is the we Les Wexner yeah. Medical Center. So he, um, I have family that works there and he owned it. He's obviously a billionaire, had a lot of money in it. And then once all of the Epstein stuff came out in like 2018, backed out of it. The hospital lost a bunch of money. It was like this whole thing. Mm. Um, so he is like a notorious name in Columbus. So I'm from yeah. Cleveland. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, you are? Yes, I am. Oh. Are you? No, I'm just oh. I'm I fine. spent some time there. I'm just oh a, really interested in the Wexners are, in Columbus. Are you yeah. telling me Urban Meyer might know something? Urban Meyer might know something. <laughs> and so um when like the limited all of the people that I went to college with work basically work at like all of the brands that yeah. he used to own mm -hmm. question so yeah victoria's secret the limited limited two which was like then justice which you guys don't care about because that's like a little girl brand now um all of those are housed in columbus along with the ohio state medical center mm -hmm. like or the wexner medical center um and so he had like columbus is sneaky a really 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 rich city yeah it like, is. there's a lot of money in columbus and so he had crazy houses in the suburbs like everyone knew where he lived everyone knew about him and his family and his family went to prestigious schools in columbus and so once all of that came out he kind of went like totally underground bunker. yeah mm -hmm. mm. and yeah yeah columbus i always joke that like if twin peaks were like gonna be made today and like about a real place it would mm -hmm. be about columbus, columbus because is such a cool city. there's like some dark dark it's like the bermuda triangle for me of america like it there's some dark dark stuff happening in columbus just because of the way like all of the shipping happens out of there all of like it's a huge flight hub it's a huge like it's a big city it's a massive it's, city it's but the biggest like, city in ohio there's no a lot of like it. drugs run out of there there's a lot of human trafficking run out of there there's oh, a lot yeah. of money that moves in and out of there like it's just a really interesting ohio, kind of hot spot ohio has a lot of highways running through it mm -hmm. and so toledo columbus even cleveland um have some of the highest concentrations for human sex trafficking yeah because you can basically run off the map. Yeah. Because in Columbus, you can go from 670 yeah, to 270. Sure. And then in Toledo, this doesn't, again, no one knows the highway names, but like you can go from like 480 to 990 and you basically can clear your tracks. Mad Dog knows everything there is to know I, about wrestling. I, 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 I knew this Italian guy named Frouche. Well, it's not his real name. That's actually, I think, a. A slur in Fra Italian for Fraucho? gay people. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> oh, he no. lived in the, he lived. I know, but we called him that for years. But he lived in the basement of a bar in Cleveland in exchange for uh, cleaning the bar. Oh, I wonder. And he what was kind of like was. an indentured servant there. Oh. 
But it I also knew like the guy on the bar, so it's, I don't know. It sounds like I'm just a, a job that would only exist in a sitcom. Exactly. But he, I don't think he got any money from it. Yeah. He was well, just he, allowed to live there and like mm, drink their and, warmest beer. Yeah. Well, he was, yeah. I mean, he didn't have papers or anything, so he just kind of like lived there and, you know, yelled at everyone in Italian. But he was, he was tight. Sounds like a good guy. Yeah. yeah it, was, it, was, it was cool. But Wexner, so the other thing about Wexner and Epstein, though, is that we have heard. Probably the most consistently from people kind of giving us like tips, like people from Ohio, people who, you know, people who knew people related to Wexner is that Leslie Wexner and Jeffrey Epstein have a longstanding rumored sexual relationship mm -hmm. with their penises. Mm. Docking. So something that is very so Epstein's uh, big townhouse that at one time was the largest private residence in Manhattan yeah. mm -hmm. is technically still owned by Wexner was it ever transferred? It was transferred in the in the in the two thousands. Okay. But yeah, I mean, th this is this is fucking crazy. So yeah, Epstein's Epstein's giant town. I mean, the thing is, we went there like a month or two ago. Yeah, huge fucking oh, house. I I took a picture of it right the after doors the doors are like FBI. fifty. No shit. Yeah, let me show you this yeah. picture. Yeah, it it, and it. I mean, it's it's the doors are huge. I gotta say, love a big door. Oh yeah. yeah. I was just Check this out. I would I just went for a walk through uh Yale's campus oh, shit. last yeah, week. Yeah, you see that where they busted in? Yeah, yeah. In the J E inscription. Oh, cool. Yeah, the J E's yeah. gone. That's, that's, wow. Yeah, it's gone. We, we took some the S's on the other side. We, yeah, we took some of his mail. Bot. No, just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I love a good door too. I, I was just saying I was in New Haven like a week and a half ago for the first time. I just walked through Yale's campus hoping that mm, I would like dude. meet a skull and bone or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the doors on that campus are amazing. They all have like the, the curved tops to oh, them. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just yeah, want to walk through. Weigh like 5,000 pounds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're four walking through like hunched over in a cloak. Yeah, maybe like yeah, rocking a candle. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, totally. Holding a scroll. Yeah, exactly. I saying you're like, I'm a sucker for a good door. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, you were, you were on that walk with us. <laughs> that was the one thing you were saying. You're like, I'm breathing and all like the intelligent air. And the guy's like, yo, you going to sing new today? Yeah, no. Yeah, we were doing like a, a real quick interview. And I was like, you know what? There's some just that's enchanting about being on a campus with this much history and the thirst for knowledge you can <laughs> smell it in the air and this guy comes by he's like yo pft you going to sigma nu i was like fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's rage um but the, the crazy thing so wexner basically like i mean the townhouse is yeah. a really good example of that wexner pays the most money i, I can't remember tens he of millions bought it from the dwight school which yeah. is another prestigious yes. high school that's on the west side yeah and they yeah. had a campus on the east side at that point yes yeah yeah weird he, he bought it from them for an in obscene amount of money insane and then the crazy thing is he furnished a lot of it i mean epstein brought his own weird shit in mm. but like wexner paid it was like a million dollars a day for new furnishings like all this crazy shit in there spent less than two weeks there ever yeah gave it to jeffrey epstein it's also just a way for moving money yeah. right mm -hmm. like real estate's like nfts for old people yeah where it's just like a way to kind of move a ton of money into like another thing you yeah know what I yeah mean? yeah it's like parking your money in art yeah like i i will i will sell you this townhouse at a 90 percent yeah you know, reduced rate or whatever yeah. yeah and now it just becomes and yours it's like and a shell company buys it and it's owned by something else and you're not paying taxes because it moves through this thing and mm -hmm. it's you know Classic. All my classic money is parked in Supreme box tees. That's a good investment. <laughs> yeah, stuff. only just goes up. Still got the Beanie Babies. Recently sold some NFTs, so I, I liken myself as a financier. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> I, yeah, I've I've sold an NFT, but I didn't. I couldn't figure out how to collect the money, so it just expired. <laughs> I, I don't. I still don't know what NFTs Dude, are. I, I understand the concept. I just know that some people think that they're valuable. So I should probably also think that they're valuable at some point. Or, or you I'm, just, I'm just like falling in line. It's like, well, imagine if like there was a Fortnite skin, uh, but you had to pay more money for it. Okay. All right. That's you're there. You're Metaverse. There. Yeah. yeah. What about Valorant? That's what, that, that exactly. That's what I was about to say. That's what sold me originally. There was a dude who was talking about NFTs, and they he he said CS:GO, which is which is very akin yeah, to yeah. Valorant. Yeah. But I've spent a good two racks on Valorant skins for sure. <laughs> um, so, th but they're valuable inside of this thing, right? So yeah. like, that's how va the Valorant, the game is free, but there's like one of the biggest growing games because like they do shit like that and people buy skins. So it's like, like little, you know, like a little clubhouse prestige that you have. Uh, I get it. I don't think it's like going to be, and this is just, it's a hot take because the NFT bros are going to be after me if I say this. You're going to kill but you. Like, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's going to be like anything that you can like, trade for real i just think it's gonna be just like every other crypto shit like, yeah i've noticed it's that gonna be, it's gonna be valuable in sex yeah Re recently uh the the crypto nft bros are starting to 
they're like on a higher level of irony than the people that hate NFTs. Yes, now. yeah, Have you yeah. Noticed that? They're like, go ahead, right click and save it. Yeah, they're like, see if I care. I did it too. Yeah, and they'll be like, oh my god, I can't believe this person right clicked. I'm reporting you to the FBI. Yeah, and then the person that right clicked is like, oh man, I got to screenshot this and post it mm -hmm. on Twitter because these guys don't understand that I can just right click their thing. It's yeah, like, no. Yeah. The NFT bros have now like usurped you exactly. on the irony level where they know that that's going to be your response. Yeah, yeah. So now my brain is all fucked up because I'm like, wait, the guy I thought was a bigger dork at the start of this conversation is actually owning the other guy. <laughs> I guess he's right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the. I mean, the thing is, if you know, if you can make some money on it, go fucking. I, I don't right. know what they are. I mean, I know what they are, but I don't know what the social utility of it is. Doesn't seem like there's any. But you know what? If it yeah, if it, if it pays for a new Supreme box tee, <laughs> go right ahead, my friend. I don't care. Absolutely. Yeah. Just don't get caught holding the bag. That's the you know. That's it. No, yep. dude. And the thing is, she's wrong. You, you totally want the bag. No, so you don't understand. You this. want you don't want to be the last one to own the NFT. Oh, why would I not want to be the last one with the bag? Because no, no the, of money. You, we're misconstruing what's the bag. So there's two bags. The bag of NFT. There's, yeah. There's the currency and then there's the product. You want to yeah. be the the penultimate person to hold the bag. In order of to be exactly. a seller, there's got to be a buyer, and you don't want to be the last one selling. Well, so, I, I think no if buyers. you're unable to sell, it's just because you're just a bad salesperson. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, so, so you, you're not talking up the NFT enough if, I, if you're holding the bag at the. End. I've gone out and secured the bag, uh -huh. and now, but that's wrong to do. No, now? no, no securing no, no. is different, different than bag. holding. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you gotta keep track of your. Also, bags. a lot of the people who are buying these NFTs are crypto. You know, people have done really well in crypto. Yeah, yeah. So that's where the money is. You're like, well, you know, I made so much money just trading crypto. Let me buy stuff that I can use with my crypto. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's either you cash Fentanyl. out or you keep it. You gotta move it somewhere. Fentanyl was, never goes bad. <laughs> I was already timeless. out on NFTs and then I saw a TikTok of Gary Vaynerchuk saying that people should start making their houses NFTs. And I was like, we're just throwing words. I love this Gary. Yeah, yeah, that that even we're mean. just <laughs> saying shit. He's like, change your house around a little bit so no one else can have it. <laughs> have, have you seen the Gary V motivational speeches that he does mm -mm. where he's given the, the key to his success in life? You guys no. have to watch this. He he he's talking to like a big audience, like a TED Talk thing, except it's Gary Talk or whatever he does. And he's like, every morning in the shower, I look at myself in the mirror and I imagine that my entire family has been murdered in what? front of my face. And I think to myself, what's really important? And I visualize With them the dying family? in oh, front of me. Oh my god! And that's how he, he does this in the morning to get himself into a headspace where he can like prioritize what's important spends no, 45 minutes hugging his kid yeah. that morning's like i love you so much absolute psycho. no it was worse than that he like looked at somebody and said you love your family right like you really love your family the person was like yeah he's like good imagine they're all dead <laughs> it was at a symposium also let's just say gary v's probably good amount of wealth but like mm -hmm. he makes a lot of money just going to places and talking oh, yeah. to people. That's like, anybody who's going to places and talking to people, that's how they make money. Yeah. Actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cause like if, if he was just skating by off all his NFT shit and yeah. Yeah, shoes and trading cards that he was selling, he probably wouldn't, who would want to go tell other people how to do it? Yeah. It makes no really, sense. Really, have you, have you, have you checked his receipts? You know what I mean? Like, I, cause oh, like yeah. he's been making, he's been making predictions for a good 15 years. He's now. got, like, cause he got a lot of bad ones. Old takes expenses. I don't, oh, he did. Does he? I don't I, know. I well, I'll check it out. I'll check it out at some yeah. point. He's been saying he well, wants to own the Jets for like 25 years. And at, at some point, you got to shit <laughs> Dude, or get there's some of these guys. Get, I mean, Gary V, his parents had a wine business. And he then was in charge of the wine business. And he was at a very great time in the world where you could take stuff online. Yeah. So if it wasn't online yet, like there's a bunch of these, I mean, dot-com CEOs. Like there was a guy who did diapers.com. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pets.com. Pets.com. So com. smart. Like, Man, wish I was there. I know Time Machine number one, <laughs> dude. Buying, having like ha Pizza.com, exactly. But also, there is this element that Porn.com. Oh, if you're dude. just the first person to like <laughs> put yeah. stuff in the metaverse, you might. Well, like, yeah, that's. That, what I, it think, is. Yeah. I think that's because I think that's what people are like. It's like it's Web 3.0. So it's like I didn't get on on Web 1.0. I didn't get on 2.0. But like yeah. this time, I'm there first. And like, yeah, like the fucking floss dance. Like if I can sell that for ten thousand Bitcoin. Like I'm, you know, I'm a genius. I'm gonna like, you know, open a wine shop in the metaverse. Mm -hmm. and I'll be Gary. What v. is the metaverse? Uh, <laughs> that's. A, I think that's another episode. Imagine anyway. if you lived in Fortnite. So, so Epstein, yeah. he wants to live in Avatar. That's his like goal. He, Arian is the world's biggest Avatar fan. I love that's that. facts. Wait, they're, they're they're over there on Pandora, living life. We're over here discussing 
intellectual property digitally. It's fucking stupid. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) So Epstein was said to have had a fake Austrian passport that had his photo, but a false name. So the passport showed his place of residence in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. So this was brought up when uh, Alexander Acosta. Well, that's a little. Let's let's get back to. Did he have the passport? Is the passport? He did have a passport. So he had fake passports. This was during the time where. You know the Kish- like the Khashoggi's, which is are somehow involved, which yes. are involved yeah. in a whole nother thing. Oh like, yeah, Iran Contra. Yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah. like, I'm not. I don't want to draw connect too many dots, but there is a possibility that Epstein helped. You know, f- like finance Iran Contra. I mean, the, the, is that a little too far of a stretch? I mean, I don't know. You know, yeah. I, I, it would just literally be a guess. I pro- I would say from his position, which was relatively low, probably not. But I guarantee that he was around people that were. And yeah. certainly, Ghislaine's father played his part, not necessarily in Iran Contra, but adjacent to that. You know, mm. he was part of that entire milieu that that kind of came from. But I mean, with 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 Epstein's false, pa- multiple, I think, false passwords, yeah. that's yeah. just the one we know about in the safe, uh, which also did not get brought up at the trial. No, it didn't. Um, but, uh, but I mean, so, well, Epstein, I, I mean, let's take it to 91 when he meets Ghislaine. Right. So one of the big things we found out in this trial, right, is like Ghislaine Maxwell. So Epstein's rich, right? Like, or he's getting rich. You know, he's got these clients. He's he's hooking up, having sex with Leslie Wexner, allegedly. Uh, you know, he's but he's he's making money, making money. But he's not from this world, right? And so like he doesn't have the social connections or like sort of like a uh sh- not a chauffeur, but like a companion to take him through this sort of rarefied world that he's in. But in 1991, and we still don't know the exact date. We don't exactly know yeah, when they met. Some, Could like, be in the 80s. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. some conflicting reporting. Yeah, but which is weird that we don't know Maybe exactly they had a when fling they met. One time, yeah, one night stand, reconnected after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, they were probably they're rubbing elbows with similar people yeah. at that time so they could have met at any number of like functions or... I, I read a lot of people reporting like probably not around 1988 he met yeah. Ghislaine Maxwell and this is when and, Robert Maxwell is still alive too. yeah possibly through Robert Maxwell which is very interesting right so so her dad uh, Robert Maxwell he was a spy yes. yes right and that's that's confirmed or is this well, so that's that's what I've always heard. Alleged, but it's alleged by a lot of people. It's alleged so much, you're sort of like, well, yeah, it's maybe not an allegation. One anymore. of the first people to allege it was Seymour Hirsch, uh, who you know, very famous journalist, you know, mm-hmm. investigative mm-hmm. reporter. Who uh, there was this guy in the '80s uh, named Venunu, who was a uh, Israeli like nuclear technician, and you know, Israel does not officially have atomic bombs um, when, in fact, they they definitely do. I mean, it's like 100% confirmed. They have like a ton of atomic weapons. Um, but he was a, he was a technician and he was fired. Uh, he la- he sort of went on a journey of self-discovery throughout the world. And then when he was in Australia, sort of he was painting a church while he started talking to this guy. He's like, oh, yeah, I have all these like pictures and documentation that like Israel has nuclear weapons. And the guy he was talking to actually turned out to be a real son of a bitch was like, we got to sell your story. So they go over to England to try to sell that story. You know, the Times of London, like a pretty serious paper, you know, bites. And they're like, we'll, we'll t- you know, we'll look into it. And they sort of start, you know, documenting it, doing this like pretty rigorous reporting on it at first. Um, in the meantime, the guy that he originally approached, like, you know, like the guy he met while painting a church wall, goes to the Daily Mirror and all of these sort of like tabloids, many of which were owned by Robert Maxwell, Ghislaine's father. Uh, once they get word that there's these photographs of Israel's nuclear sites that are getting out there, they get the photographs from this guy, Oscar, who's, uh, you know, with Venunu, the, the sort of like scam friend of his. And Robert Maxwell gives them to the Israeli government um, and essentially helps lure Venunu by using a honeypot, a woman, mm-hmm. to come and seduce him, meet him on the street, chance yeah. encounter. It's like, oh, you're so, that's crazy. You love the nuclear weapons. My rule of thumb is like anytime Any a remotely woman. attractive yeah. woman initiates a conversation yeah. with me or looks at me, I'm like, uh, no. Yeah, I'm is, sorry. Something's no, not no, adding no, up. No, 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 yeah, no, not nice happening. Try. Not ending up with a weird <laughs> picture of my fucked up dick on the internet, baby. Yeah. Like, not happening. Billy already did that to me, yeah. actually. He put a picture he of my penis online. Uh, it was... I was peeing story. at the time. Gray sweatpants. <laughs> it was. I was taking a leak, and he took a picture of me as I was peeing. And then, that, right after 18. that, he, right after that, he tweeted out my phone number within 
like 15 okay. minutes. You know, so it's been a long time. Within we've 15 learned, minutes, Billy put my penis on the internet and also my phone number. The two things as an intern you probably shouldn't do yeah. uh, to well, your boss. five years ago. But uh, like he only had it, you know, up to go from there. You yeah. can't get any worse than that. But, yeah, you start at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I digress. I'm sorry. So Well, so this guy, five. Vanunu, gets black bagged, uh, you know, by Mossad and taken to Israel and put on basically what well, it was essentially like a secret trial and then was in prison for decades and now like can't talk to foreign journalists. He's out of prison now, but he's essentially on house arrest. Can't talk to any foreign journalist. Can't talk to anybody. Like he gets rearrested constantly. And Robert Maxwell played a big part in that. But he was also, I mean, he was this big publisher. Yeah. And so he was going around to all of all over Eastern Europe publishing scientific manuals, uh, but really, you know, getting information from people because he had close connections to both the head of the KGB and also big, big higher ups in Bulgaria's government, which I think he was probably just like, well, there's all these spies in like Czechoslovakia in Russia, but no one gives a fuck about Bulgaria. So I'll go there. Um, but, uh, he, you know, he had he was moving a lot of money around in the Eastern Bloc, too. Um, but uh, and huge ties in the UK government. Yeah, absolutely. He served in Parliament, right? Yeah, yeah. he's a Labour counselor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, I've been trying to track he's down. He's like a Murdoch posters. type, but so like this stuff like crosses. It's again, it's like you know I was saying with like Wall Street and how all this stuff crosses over with intelligence. It's the same thing with publishing. Yeah. Like since like the dawn of time. I mean, you talk about you know Benjamin Franklin with his papers and whatever. Like all newspaper men are like intelligence assets all of them we know that about at the post at the times at like every paper they're always talking to the government like different agents whether they know it or not mm -hmm. um and so he had all of these kinds of relationships they're, they're very useful to yeah them. exactly what do you think the papers brokers. are for yeah, yeah 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 what do you think they're printing in the papers exactly so all right so um, and then he died because he was peeing off his yacht. And well, that totally adds up, right? It's crazy because the actually the railings on his yacht. I mean, the, Robert Maxwell was fucking huge. He was six four and like low center of gravity. He's two, yeah. He was two eighty, which I think that's underestimation. Quick, quick that's, question. Yeah, I need your guys' opinion. I found a picture of Robert Maxwell with uh, Mother Teresa. Yeah. Not Mother Teresa. Uh, oh, she's bad. Yeah, yeah, did. yeah, yeah. We we Is that uh, real. With him and Mother Teresa, I don't. I'm probably yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's I haven't pictures seen it, of but, him with everybody. Yeah. There's pictures of him mm -hmm. with Princess Diana. There's yeah. pictures of him with Donald Trump, and I think no, not Kish I don't think Khashoggi's in that. Although there is a like a sort of like spotted in a party of Trump, Khashoggi, and fucking uh, Maxwell on a yacht on Khashoggi's yacht yeah. at the Queen song, partying. I love it. Yeah. Um, we we put Mother Teresa in a figure four. Leg lock. Oh, no, she's, she's bad. She's oh, rotten, yeah. dude. Imagine being like, I have cancer, and somebody would be like, well, pray. Why don't you pray? No, you, the <laughs> fucked up thing, like, I didn't realize this about her, but she would just go door to door yeah. as people were dying just to get her stats up. Like, it was garbage stat time. Stat padding. Yeah, yeah conversion. No she's padding? Yeah, 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 she, she just, like, sprinkle padding. holy water on him, walk out the door and be like, chalk another one up for, for MT. Like, I would set another all-time record tonight, guys. Like, Will Chamberlain wow. holding up a 100 what? after she was done. They were on death's door, and we were saying, like, how fucked up would it have been if the people that were dying, if their religion was right? And Mother <laughs> yeah, Teresa yeah. came in at the last second. They lived their entire life. Yeah. And like they're going to go to heaven. Muslim, yeah. And then at the very last second, Mother Teresa comes in. You're not even conscious. Yeah. And she just sends you to hell. Especially because you did Yeah, yeah, because you just didn't also, like, don't you have to, like, accept? I mean, I'm Jewish, but, like, don't you have to accept Jesus as, like, your Lord and Savior? Because if you're, like, passed out and you don't do that, did Mother Teresa just send you to Catholic hell? She might have. Dude, dude. dude imagine if it was like so much worse, like if there was like a DraftKings for that at the time and she start <laughs> you start seeing her point shave. Yeah. You're like, bro. Uh, she yeah. has to like she has to come here to like clear it up. All the, yeah, <laughs> we would definitely have her on the All pod. the saints are up in heaven just being like, yo, Mother Teresa's putting up triple digits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, They're not yeah, she's yeah. not getting elected into the, They're like, into hey, the Hall of Fame. You know, having women do this, not so yeah. bad. <laughs> then you've got the argument going on whether a triple double even matters anymore. Yeah. If they're just running the numbers, Teresa couldn't play back in Babylon. Yeah, it yeah. was a live beat era back then. <laughs> it, was a, it was a different game. But yeah, so Robert Maxwell is like, I mean, he falls off his yacht. And basically, I mean, Ghislaine comes out and says it about a week later or five days later in a press conference in Spain where she's like, I think my father was murdered. To this oh, yeah. day, she, st she still holds that yeah. he was pushed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we got to say, like, we looked at that boat, high railing. Large man, calm low center of gra gravity. C calm mm -hmm. sea, by the way. Like, this is like to the guy. Over, very uh, difficult. Yeah. The guy was like, 
insane right and like he was i call i call it food madness because he had he no he ate a lot of food and like i think kind of drove him nuts Mm -hmm. um but uh yeah yeah he like falling like he would have literally had to go like off this giant a heart attack involved that's a people but even if you have a heart attack i'm saying you have a heart i mean granted i've never seen a heart attack in real life but i've seen plenty of life alert commercials you're not leaping forward over a railing if you have a heart attack no you're just your your knees give out right yeah you grab your arm for some reason if anything wouldn't you fall backwards yeah probably yeah you definitely wouldn't go over a rail it's it's kind of crazy how decentralized the media is now today and how like i think there is still a lot of power in that sort of stuff but you know i could just tweet those nuclear documents yeah yeah like exactly nowadays. yeah totally. or just but you know who knows if it get deleted immediately yeah then your dick's ending up online literally within a minute yeah. <laughs> yeah. all Jeez. right so so um epstein meets jelaine uh-huh and i was i always fuck up her name i always go back and say every real Jelaine. though every single one of her lawyers pronounces Ghislaine differently yeah really yes. well it's a french name and it's like have you ever like Try to pronounce le enfant. You know what's weird, le though, le is that the okay, French it. person I know pronounces it Ghislaine. Ghislaine. And they're French. And I'm like, but she says Ghislaine. Yeah. I, I looked it up because I was butchering it. Yeah. And I got Ghislaine. Yeah, yeah that's it's Ghislaine. Right. I think it's yeah. Ghislaine, as yeah. I put, but like, I just call it Ghislaine. Gilly yeah. the kid. Yeah, American. Ghislaine. So so they met they met sometime around nineteen eight late eighties late eighties we'll yeah 90s, the first photo of them together is actually is at, in New York at a sort of like celebration of Robert Maxwell's life like a memorial but also for his wife Elizabeth Maxwell like it's sort of like a celebration of both of them and there's a photo of them sitting next to each other so it looks like they're already pretty chummy however during this trial the flight logs got presented and so we've already seen most of the flight logs. Or a lot of the flight logs, but there's several pages that we actually haven't seen, and they're all blacked out because they're not pertinent. Even yeah, the, well, the, no, the prosecution was so lazy with their redactions. Wow, well, yeah, that they re- yeah, this is what they said. And we're oh, we're just we just wanted to do it the oh, quickest so way, so I, they literally so redacted every person's name. Yeah, in the new flight logs that they submitted, the judge, rightfully so, was like. No, you guys got to go back and just redact the like names of the victims because yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, the other people don't have a claim in this case, and so they're supposed to submit to public record these so flight we, logs without yeah. that redact. Quick question: I fell victim to uh, trial tracker. Yeah, on yeah, 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 uh, yeah. The old sorry. fake news, I fake care. out. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like. To me, as seeing it, I saw like. You know, there, you follow a bunch of different journalists who are trying to do it, but like for some reason, I co- haven't collated in one place. Yeah, it, yeah, it's good. Yeah, and I didn't. I never clicked on the guy's Substack. I didn't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so stuff that was going. And it's good that we should correct this now because I did say yo follow this Twitter. Yeah, but so well, one of the things they said now. was that growth. They, they had growth. they had um Comey's daughter is on the prosecution. Yes, yeah, that's she's true. leading the prosecution. Maureen Comey, and yeah. then the judge. Uh, and they also talked about the um, Allison Nathan, the judge, Allison Nathan, the judge. And basically they're trying to push this narrative that everything's sort of in all, everyone's involved and it's going to be like. Clean. Yeah, I see. I, see what, I mean, the, here's the thing is like the federal we were actually just talking about this earlier today is like the federal government has actually literally already covered this up. Yeah, like, really? Yeah. In, in Florida. I mean, mm-hmm. that they, they really did the footwork on that. Yeah. I mean, this was back. So. I mean, I feel like, should we go here now or we'll just get into it? Yeah, yeah. When Epstein first gets arrested, sort of. Yeah. It's in um, conjunction with crimes in Palm Beach. There's like some girls that basically a a mother calls the local Palm Beach police and is like, Mm -hmm. hey, this guy paid my daughter $300 to for a massage. My daughter's like 15. What the fuck? Yeah. And the Palm Beach police are like, uh, okay, we're going to look into it. Cause Epstein has that huge mansion in Palm beach. Mm-hmm. They come up with like 30 victims on the record. All for, like all throughout Palm beach. There's like stuff going on at the local high school. There's reports of Ghislaine acting as a procurer for him at the local high school, bringing girls to his house, yeah. molesting them, sexually assault, uh, assaulting them, even some cases of rape. Like, some horrific, horrific shit. So at this point, the feds also get involved. Because when you're looking at a crime of that level, and when there's potential trafficking charges because he's maybe flying girls from New York to Florida, that's crossing state lines, now it's federal crime. So the feds get involved, and they prepare this indictment that's like 53 pages 
along with an 83 page memorandum like specifying all these charges no one ever sees it because and this is where this cover-up begins they the feds and this is unheard of are basically like you know what we don't want to try this case we're going to kick it to the state which makes absolutely no sense the state then files what's called a non-prosecution agreement. This is like very, very weird, where the federal government says, we're not going to prosecute you and we're not going to prosecute any unnamed co-conspirators who could possibly ever be named in conjunction with this case. So if so it we, came out that you were at Epstein's house doing this stuff with Epstein and uh -huh. you're like, I did it. You could not be prosecuted. So it's like not only get out of jail free for you, but also all your friends. All your boys. Yes. And no girls. What is, the, done. What, yeah. is the, what is the legal justification they have in doing something like that? So that's real. That's a really good question. And no one really knows. The only case, like NPAs are used when usually it's like, okay, I've made, I'm guilty, but I'm making a plea deal with the government because we're going to kick it up to someone up higher who's going to, you know, I'm going to testify against them. So it would be like, oh, that's what a plea deal is. I'm not going to be prosecuted because whatever. Yeah. This is like unheard of. Yeah. It's so unheard of that they're like trying to still challenge it. They're petitioning the Supreme Court right now. One of the victims yeah. is petitioning this to be like totally thrown out because it's so unheard of. So let, let's speculate why that might be. So yeah. I just want to bring up Alexander Acosta. Yeah, let's talk yes. about him. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Bill. Sorry, yeah. I was just grabbing the water. It's getting hot in here. Everybody have a water. Everyone Drink water up. Break. Water water break. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm watered up. Sweet. This die, thing's good. It's got a wide mouth so you can pee in it. Like a Yo, Gatorade It's, it's great dip. dip for yeah. Dip, dip, oh, yeah. Dip spinning. Spin yeah. in it? Oh, there goes the jewel. <laughs> um, That's the most addictive thing I've ever done, by the way, jeweling. Oh, it's so fucked up, man. I quit. I, I, I quit actually, cigs, too. I quit jeweling smoking analog cigarettes. Fuck. And they got me off. I was thinking about doing that again. Yeah. Cigs rock, baby. They do. They look so cool when voice. you smoke no. them. Dude, fuck it. You really when you when you put it in your mouth and take a puff, but you release your fingers. The best. Insane. You know you know how I quit dip and how? Basically you get your favorite flavor. Yeah. You take a spoonful of it and you gotta set a day aside. But it's worth it. In the long run, you gotta take a day aside, just you know, a day that you can just spend being miserable and you just swallow a spoonful <gasps> of dip and then you're done. A teacher in my high school made a kid wow. eat a cigarette once because of that shit. Yeah. yeah no, it was, I, I, there's a That's story, not, not going to name any of the names, but yeah, basically yeah. a young teacher walked in on a kid dipping at a, a, like a high school. It was like a boarding school. And if you got caught dipping, it like was counted as like drugs and you could get kicked out and he goes, I'm not going to tell anybody, but you got to swallow that dip right oh, now. Jesus <gasps> Christ. And then, but it worked, but like gets them off it. I mean, you know, ends justify the means. Yeah. Anyway. Oh my God. Wow. Good yeah. for you. I'm gonna start dipping. <laughs> it's it's not as cool as smoking. I try I tried to dip cool. for a second high school. It didn't work. The coolest part about dipping is when you have the tin in your pocket and you can see the circle. Oh yeah, yeah. that's by far the coolest. Yeah, but you know then you have to like you used walk to do that around. with toys. It was yeah. really cool in high school. Yeah, yeah. Now After that, it's like puck. like packing dips like random times yeah. where you're like not supposed to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like trying to like, kiss someone, you're just like, oh, sorry. Wait. It's <laughs> not as cool in a business meeting when you walk in <laughs> yeah. with like a transparent yeah, 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 bottle yeah, yeah, of water. You're just, just spinning, spinning into yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, Bill. So here's oh, yeah, so in Alex the Trump, Acosta. Yeah. So he, at the time, he was the US, U.S. attorney for Southern District of Florida. Yes. Uh, he stated to a Trump transition interviewer that I was told Epstein belonged to intelligence and to leave it alone and that mm -hmm. Epstein was above his pay grade. Yeah. So Alex Acosta was the U.S. attorney down in Miami, Southern District of Florida uh, at the time. And he was the one who was in charge of negotiating this plea deal with Epstein's lawyers, hmm. this non-prosecution agreement. And so he got, you know, this all came out with... Um, you know, during when he was uh, labor secretary for Trump mm -hmm. and, you know, he ended up having to resign. All these people looked into it. Funny enough, when they were when DOJ was investigating, like, you know, OK, they're investigating what they did. I mean, I don't yeah, know how they just look at the phone records from five years ago. Uh -huh. Well, it turns out that actually a year of Acosta's emails while he was. Uh, negotiating that very same plea deal where, oops, gone, deleted due to a technical difficulty. Very weird. A lot of technical difficulties. It's it, pretty much it's impossible to delete an email, too. Yeah, Dude, they're, they're up in heaven with Hillary's emails. Yeah. <laughs> Looking down at all the other emails fondly. <laughs> yeah, but people always say, like, but her emails derisively. I really still want to see what her I'm like, is literally, like. show me yes. those emails. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I actually would like to know what they are. Yeah. yeah. Well, she just got a master class 
I know I uh, took it. You took her? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I honestly think her baby eating technique is pretty rough. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I've, you know, I've seen a lot of amateurs perform much better than her. She doesn't clean the bones. No, no, yeah. no, no. She didn't treat Jesus like a chicken Christ. wing. That's disgrace. Yeah. yeah. How's her IT? Oh, awful. <laughs> well, it's it, half of it is her French kissing Huma Abedin, which I thought was delightful. <laughs> oh, Wait, we what have... did y'all think of her? What did y'all think of her? Uh, reading her acceptance speech insane <laughs> yeah that's like it's Dude, could so you imagine crazy. doing that it's, it's the just second like, most cringiest oh thing God. i've seen hillary do what's Which the first a lot the first thing and then she didn't even do it she was just there just watch mary j blige sing to hillary clinton oh it is one of the cringiest shit you'll ever see it's i, I, I would love yeah I, I've, I've never seen that I, the just oh chilling I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids was pretty oh, bad too. I love that. Or with wait, the koozie. The hot sauce in my bag. And this wasn't her. Swag, yeah. This wasn't was her. Great. This was her team. But in Africa, they call her Sister Hillary. Was one of the most insane things I've ever seen in my life. Wait, what? Even if that's true. So they know, put out when she was like running, they put out some big story that was like about because they were saying the Clinton initiative, you know, all the horrible shit that they did in Africa. All that stuff was coming up during her uh, during her. Mm. When she was, run, yeah, yeah, presidential run. Thank you. Remember when he bombed and that so they, soap like, factory there? Yeah. 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 So they like up. planted this story that was like, it literally is called in Africa. They call her sister Hillary. Oh my God. It's Who's calling her? What, what, what <laughs> lady in Nigeria is like, oh, sister Hillary's running in America? I love that lady. I kind of respect the audacity. Incredible. Of it. Like, let's yeah. just go for yeah. it. Or wait, 10 ways Hillary's like your abuela too? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was pretty was good. good. <laughs> yeah. I just think that like her talking about the election still is like, I'm just like, girl, you have to move on. Literally, that's Joe Biden's it, president now. She's like, like, doing the Earth 2 thing. Yeah. That that everybody got made fun of but for doing like, oh, God. It just reminds me of like a girlfriend who will not stop talking about about her breakup where it's just like you have to let it go like he's moved on yeah. we've moved on it's yeah. been five like, years trump's ten years. not president anymore right. either. Like, like neither dude. of you are president like how yeah. long am i supposed to feel sorry for somebody who didn't get to become president exactly zero seconds zero seconds yeah. I, none. none could not none. Care less. Negative, none. negative seconds none yeah. like go take care of your fucking dying husband lady have yeah. you seen him lately <laughs> He look, I cry. He looks but, dead. By the yeah, way, we re bad. we yeah. really yeah. need a lot. He's not well. We need some younger politicians. I think we can all agree that. Jeez, these people. Like, how do they survive this long? Incredible. Well, that's the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, baby I think, sucking. Yeah, the, like a Capri Sun. Yeah. <laughs> My buddy has some adrenochrome <laughs> that. I am trying to try. No, we already talked no, about this. I, but like, what if it I turns you okay evil? My sponsor. What? What if it turns you evil? I'm just gonna point. do a little bit. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Add a little. We talked about this. You're feels. not touching. I immediately put on like a you, oversized leather jacket, he... round sunglasses, and start sm smoking. <laughs> no, no, a I don't know. But where did he get it? what? <laughs> he got. Okay, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm about to do. What is adrenochrome? What is oh, this? Oh man, this is. Let me take you back to the Middle Ages. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thing is this stuff's so crazy and there's just so much like crazy. Well, Billy just knows about it from a standpoint of if you can use it as a supplement to work out. Can that's, you? that's how Billy gets into all substances. No, no, no. I, I don't actually I actually purposely avoid all of this like those types of like readings and stuff on bodybuilding forums. Well, no, no I, he I loves, love bodybuilding he forums, body but they don't, but they that's don't even know the, about the adrenochrome. That's, that's yeah, where you yeah, get yeah. the real well, information. That's the well, like well, what is it? second what level bodybuilding it? forum. You have to get like, <laughs> like a the, certain level and they let you into the it's, adrenochrome. Well, it's like the 4chan of bodybuilding. <laughs> yeah, forum. yeah. 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 So like totally. Reddit is bodybuilding forum. And then there's a 4chan bodybuilding. Forum yeah. That, yeah. Like it's hard to find. Well, so adrenochrome is, well, a naturally occurring two, substance. Two kinds of adrenochrome, I would say. There's the adrenochrome that exists that we know about, which I'm not actually sure what it's actual like supposed to be used for. I, I purposely have not read this because I don't want to read about all of it and then like literally get like I think just it's, start believing it. From what I've seen, it's like the way that mommy bloggers say apple cider vinegar can do anything. Yeah. It's like just a little bit of adrenochrome make your skin okay, nice. But me... Hunter Hunter S. Thompson wrote about it in um in fucking Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. He like mentions taking adrenochrome and going crazy. So adrenochrome, I don't know what it's actually supposed to be used for. Or it's been a long time since I looked at anything about it, but it can possibly cause like schizophrenia type uh, symptoms. But during like the Pizzagate thing, the whole thing was is that they were harvesting adrenochrome, which is caused, which occurs when children feel fear. You can suck it out of them, 
and then use it to rejuvenate yourself. Mm. And so much of the world's synthetic supply of adrenochrome comes from Wuhan, China. And so when the Wuhan ultravirus hit oh, these God. shores and shipping was shut down, people were like, this is it. Yeah. The, this Trump's closing in. The cabal is going down. He uh-huh. just shut down the adrenochrome supplies. Yeah. This, That's when they were like, oh, my God, Ellen looks peaked. Yeah. <laughs> so quick, quick Wikipedia paragraph. Adrenochrome is a chemical compound produced by the oxidation of adrenaline. Epif- yeah. Ephedrine. Yeah. It, it was the subject from limited Epinephrine. research from the 1950s through to the 1970s. It's a potential cause of schizophrenia. While it has no current medical application, the related derivative compound Carbazochrome is a hemostatic medication. Despite this compound's name, it is unrelated to the element of chromium. Instead, the chrome suffix indicates a relationship to color as pure adrenochrome Mm. is deep violet. That sounds evil as fuck. It's basically like the chrome color. Imagine if like the limitless drug was sucked out of babies. Yeah. That's like what it that's like the idea of it. I don't know where my my mind went to this, but like Monsters Inc. Yeah. Weren't they just going places trying to scare kids? They were harvesting. They like that's the most like psyop way to inject the it clown into too the... was doing that oh god that's what hollywood does they yeah their downfall will, will be their symbolism but the, but pizzagate <laughs> seems to think it's mostly like a skincare thing uh-huh like it's like you take some adrenochrome and you live longer but i'm like the people that you're pointing out as examples of this look worse than almost any human being yeah. like yeah. if bill clinton's on adrenochrome then fucking Get i'm smoking three packs me. a day from <laughs> now on he looks awful john Kerry takes adrenochrome three times a exactly day. Yeah. yeah you ever seen that picture of him and assad no, it's good. There, he's, it's it him. And, it's him and his wife eating uh, dinner oh, with Alma yeah, Asad. And I think good. John Kerry's a classic example of a guy that's so ugly that some people find him attractive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any woman that wants to fuck John Kerry also would have sex with a horse under the right circumstances. But also so boring, people assume he's got nothing to hide. Yeah, true. Uh-huh. Um, like Mitt Romney, Steve he's so yeah, boring, people guys. don't pay attention to him. Yeah. This is Asad. I know. If you're Asad, wouldn't you be like, dude, what the fuck? I think he was like that. Yeah, it's John. <laughs> this looks we like ate. the most boring dinner ever, too. Yeah, no yeah, booze. yeah. Well, uh, this did. Yeah, I mean, that stuff's just freaky. Yeah, shit. but Billy, you know that you'd freebase adrenochrome if it meant no. that you get like two extra pounds of gains. If you could I hit it off we... a meth pipe, I'd do it, dude. It, like, if these, why aren't any of these people jacked? If it That's really like, we gotta like that, cross yeah, over true. and then yeah. just start now what, that like uh, honestly, all athletes are on adrenochrome. <laughs> yeah. Like just like let's, well, let's it's mash H, up it's all HGH. the con- yeah, 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 yeah. Which like t- for Tom real Brady. though, like why doesn't Bill Clinton take HGH? Yeah, exactly. Like, like why doesn't he? Like why does it? What's he it would called? look so weird. Vernon yeah. Cruz. I mean, sh- what's the what's, Arnold's on it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you like, but Arnold was on anabolic, right? That's right. different, right? But what's crazy is all these guys. So, like, let's say the most famous roid guys who've done roids, like Sylvester Stallone, yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger, like all these guys. Everyone's like, "Oh, kill you!" All these guys are still alive. Yeah, not only Barely, alive though. Arnold Schwarzenegger became the fucking governor. Yeah, mm-hmm. which also. What the what the whole that? Uh, I was just hanging out inside with his like little Shetland sheep that, yeah. that just rolled around. Oh, Jose Canseco. Big oh, time. Yeah. Okay, well, that did drive, kind of drive him crazy. Yeah, so. But yeah. made him an amazing poster. Yeah. You guys might not know this, uh, but the guy that beat up Jose Canseco in that boxing match, uh huh. That's Billy. Billy knocked you Jose beat Canseco up out. Jose Canseco? It's yeah. A, it's a long story. Yes. <laughs> you know, the answer Sounds is, yeah. like I just heard the entirety of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Avery, Avery, pull up the picture of him just wailing on Jose Canseco's <laughs> face. It's awesome. Jamie, pull that picture up real quick. <laughs> yeah. Hulk, yeah, so Hulk Hogan's older than my father, and he's still like, he's sixty-eight. <laughs> oh my god! See, that's Billy oh, just shit. beating the fuck out of Jose Canseco. <laughs> Jeez, oh my god, he's he like crying. So I didn't even see so it there. Sad. No, Billy, Billy, like murdered. What the fuck is wrong <laughs> with you, man? <laughs> no, t- so I, did, I didn't realize that the t- old man. I didn't realize at the time he, he was talking all this like. <laughs> I basically he they, we have a boxing run up, promotion. Run up, get done up. Tell him, Billy. Yeah, run well, up, get done yeah, up. We had a boxing promotion at this company. It's called Rough and Rowdy. And yeah, yeah. Jose Canseco, you know, was a uh, you know he does a bunch of celebrity boxing matches. Anyway, he was talking shit about my boss. My boss was like, "I have kids. Please don't hurt me," because uh, he had once challenged him, and like my boss once challenged him to a boxing match, like five years ago yeah. before he became a father and everything. So he tapped you in. So yeah. he, I, was Billy like, was you did? I was like, hell yeah. Anyway, he's juice to the gills. I kind of thought I, he, you know, when you're in that headspace, yeah. you're really, there's zero mercy. Exactly. Now yeah. I'd like, I used I to snap. work at a boxing gym. Yeah. yeah. You, you wake up, you like realize like that just happened. And you're like, holy shit. Did I just 
Like you come to, I, I gave just beat up old man. Jose Canseco <laughs> CTE. Yeah. Probably already had it. Yeah. I, yeah. Fair enough. But yeah, no. Did you guys like talk after? Was he like, it was weird. Could he talk after? Yeah. He, he no. Just... I, so the thing was, he realized that basically what happened is he didn't take a dive. He would have given a better show if he could. It just realized he like his blood pressure before he went to the ring was yeah. like something insane. It was like 220 over. I heard this. What? I heard this at the next, <laughs> like, this whoever sanctioned him to fight should never he could have stroked out. No, the ring. you could. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So I didn't know that at the time. So and he threw. Dude, it. what if you killed? Him? No, it was, it was actually very close. I mean, you saw the picture. Yeah. He looked like he was dying. Oh my god. Billy almost killed. That him means you get his record. Oh, like it passes it's like, from well, one. Yeah, how predator, predator gets yeah, your kills. I get his MVP. Kills, he he gets all his home runs. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Was, that's why. That's why. <laughs> More sports players should be taken out because people people should know that. If yeah. you kill someone, you get every accomplishment they ever did in their life. Yeah. But the thing is, someone that's, kills you. That's a horrible, horrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what Javaris Crittenden was trying to do at Gilbert Arenas that one time. Yes. Was like, that's why boxers go so crazy because if they win, they get all the other guys wins. Well, yeah. Well, you know what? So <laughs> what I, I've been looking into this, traumatic brain injury really damages the pituitary gland where HGH is produced. So a lot of these guys who get hit in the head so much, they like slowly degenerate, like not Jesus. only their bodies. Well, and that that's would why make sense when you look at, I mean, look at like Muhammad Ali and yeah. what happened to him. And mm -hmm. HGH is so, plays such a big role in mental health yeah. that it's kind of like, you kind of see. That gets real scary when you start looking at like the CTE stuff too. I mean, yeah. yeah. Which, what's creepy is like, we, we talk with a lot of different athletes that are like at the tail end of their career sometimes. Yeah. And they start to think because everyone is saying like, every sign of cognitive decline must be CTE at this point. So yeah. they, um, a lot of former athletes get very paranoid that anything that they forget, like they forget a word or something. And then it becomes like a spiral. Yeah, sure. Uh, and when, then it becomes more mental. When they might not driven. have it. I mean, a lot of, a lot of former players do and It's sad to see, like they saw the, uh, the brains that were donated. I think it was like 95% of people who thought that they had CTE had it, had it. Now that number gets like confused a lot by people that are saying like 95% of football players have CTE, yeah. but it's not the people that either Donated. took their own yeah, life yeah, yeah. or were in very, very bad condition at the end of their life that thought that they had CTE. For the I, most part, they're right. I had read a while ago that it was, I think it was at Harvard or MIT, one of the big schools that's studying it, that they were like really close to being able to diagnose in live subjects, yeah. Yeah. which would be no. a, Kind yeah, of a game changer game. You know, for the NFL. You know who might have financed that research? Oh, yeah. Jeffrey fucking Epstein. That's true. Brains. Yeah. yeah. We'll be back to Brace and Liz in a second. Hey, are you feeling frustrated after getting rejected for a credit card or personal loan? It happens way too often. It actually happened to me. That's why Credit Karma is changing the way people find and apply for credit cards and loans. Whether you're refinancing credit card debt, or paying for an upcoming expense, Credit Karma uses your credit data to show your fresh personal loan offers that are personalized to you. Are you ready to apply? Head to creditkarma.com slash loan offers and see personalized offers with your approval odds right now. Go to creditkarma.com dash loan offers to find the loan for you. That's creditkarma.com dash loan offers. Do you have any ads that you want to do on our show? Like any ads that you've sold? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, I, 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 I want to try out for bet. Uh, what's what sports? Sports the, the Kings, right? Sports book. Yeah. Barstool sports book. You yeah. guys have your own betting website? Oh yeah. We're like a gambling company now. Yeah. What, what should I? What should I gamble? I love to everything. Gamble. Literally everything. Responsible. I don't know much about responsible. Yeah, but no. Yeah, resp I'm responsible for my minutes. own money. I, I retired from gambling uh, about a month ago, uh -huh. but I still give out picks because I want to tell people like what I think is going to happen. Yeah, I haven't lost a single bet since I lost well, all my money and retired. You have. You can't. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fair enough. I'm, I no, I'm, lost oh no. I you lost. okay? I'm I see still giving them out. Yeah. I'm, I'm 13 and 0. Yeah. After I stopped betting. And now, aren't been, you mad that you stopped betting? Yeah, I am very mad that people I people don't betting. understand this. This is what people everyone talks yeah. about. Like, oh, I know that's what I know. If you just keep gambling long enough, you not only make back your money, but you will be one of the richest people that's in the world. Wrong. The problem that's is, just, people go to Vegas <laughs> for a weekend. They stop gambling on like Sunday afternoon. That's no, literally you have not to how just you play keep the odds. gambling. That's how odds work, dumbass. 
You just gamble forever. <laughs> People get so fucking okay, on my back. So if been... you keep doubling down repeatedly, eventually then... you will get it all back. Ex- yeah. He's all right. So all right, you know what I'm talking about. You're not the if player. You lose always hundred dollars on a roulette spin. You put two hundred on the next one, money. and eventually you will hit one. Liz, do you know how much money you make on a two hundred dollar bet on a roulette spin? Thirty-two thousand dollars. Well, well, I'm, it's like, I'm talking just black or red, it's not like, a number. No, no, I'm going oh, yeah. numbers. Baby. <laughs> it's like Nick okay. Diaz. Like it's not that you know the time just ran out. It's just he didn't lose the fight. Yeah. Exactly. Ran out of yeah, time. Right. You run out. Yeah. I gotta take a leak. You gotta go pee. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, where were we? That okay. was that was like a, a record long side <laughs> side tangent, and basically our entire podcast is usually just side tangents. Um, that was Billy's ass rubbing up against the microphone, <laughs> ladies. Epstein plea deal. Yeah, plea deal. So Acosta. How, by the way, how much time do you guys have? Uh, I don't know what time. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Okay. All right. We're good too. Just want to make sure. Okay, three, you guys are good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. It's yeah. Okay. So, so Epstein, he uh, he gets the plea deal. Yeah. Acosta is is he intimately involved in the plea deal? Yeah. Or is he just generally aware of it? No, he's the one who's like basically takes the fall, takes the ownership of the plea deal. The thing that's interesting is that so when all that shit was going down, uh, when when he was getting flack, well, when he was Trump's labor secretary, Trump like trotted him out in a kind of press conference for him to like deal with it a little bit. And he says that in it's like a direct quote where he says, um, you know, oh, I've seen the headlines about the case 12 years ago, talking about the Epstein plea deal. And, um, you know, I'm, you know, I-, I want everyone to be aware that there were like very, the various people were involved. There was like levels of people in the DOJ that had input and oversight over that deal which mm. is like a very interesting thing to say yeah, he's basically yeah. saying that like no 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 this wasn't my decision but look he was a u.s attorney for the southern district in florida southern florida whatever and uh his direct or he directly reported to the assistant or the deputy attorney general who directly reports to the attorney general like mm-hmm. these are their dudes so you're talking about like high 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 level of doj which I think at the time the attorney general was Mukasey, I think was Look the guy. That. I don't fucking know. How do you, but also at the same time, like a steel trap. the FBI director, who also would have been involved, I mean, this is DOJ, yeah. was Robert Mueller, right? Mm-hmm. Recurring character of our lives. Yes, apparently. he's putting yeah, out yeah. The, the new edition. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. yeah. yeah. We need to get one of his but that's kids it, involved it in this. It stopped at yeah. DOJ. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, it's basically that's if it stopped just two levels higher than him. You know, I think something like this. And it's true. Like, it's hard to overstate this MPA. Not enough attention has been paid to mm-hmm. this fucking agreement. Like, it is literally unprecedented. There is no precedent Compared for this. to like the, the crimes that he was accused of. Yeah. With, yeah. It sounds like some pretty good evidence. Well, because it also it. basically violates, it completely violates the Crime Victims' Rights Act. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which basically says that victims need to be notified if the prosecution is going to like create, it's going to like work a deal. Like you have yeah. to be notified that that's happening. The federal government never notified any of the victims, which is how they were able to sue to get the thing released yeah because that's the reason we only know about the fucking mpa because one of epstein's victims sued and the feds had to be like oh our bad yeah funny you should ask us about that we actually already struck a deal with him yeah, our, yeah sorry yeah we talked to him hi boy stuff you know mm-hmm. and the crazy thing is too is is that the i mean like liz said it was 30 victims 30 victims yeah in that in that case so what he actually goes down for is solic- one count of solicitate two, ca- yeah. two counts? Mm-hmm. Look at this. Two counts of solicitation of prostitution from a minor. Which, by the way, minors can't be prostitutes. Right, exactly. Exactly. Minors yeah. can't consent to sex. That's, exactly. That's an like, unusual way to frame it. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I think they actually like changed that law too yeah. because people were like, "Oh, it's yeah." It's like finding that loophole in the like the place in Montana and Yellowstone Park yeah, where you can 50, kill somebody. Yeah, it's like a twenty-five mile like zone where you can. Can you still do that? That got closed because of a little hunting rights thing. <laughs> Fuck, dude! <laughs> it had to do with like literally an elk shot elk. Had oh to, my! Well, oh damn! Someone had to do it. I think. I think. Guy to be a I was about to get on my Gabby Petito shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Uh, <laughs> no, but for real, have you ever, ever, ever heard of the federal government being like, man, this is a huge case. We would love to do it, but we don't feel like it. Let's let the state handle no. it. Oh, my stomach hurts. I don't want to oh, do it. Oh, the federal, the feds yeah. are so famous for working like hand in hand so closely with local law enforcement, yeah. loving those guys, never wanting to take on a case themselves, let alone a big blockbuster sex trafficking These case. These are jurisdiction guys, right? Any <laughs> yeah. guy with jurisdiction loves his jurisdiction yes. and hates all the other ones. Because if you don't use your jurisdiction, it goes away. You lose it, right? You know Absolutely. in movies, every time an FBI comes up, it's like, we're taking over this investigation. The local cop's like, but, 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 but. And then they get attached yeah. to like- But this is like reverse so. Exactly. Yeah. They're like, imagine if the FBI came up like, Damn, you seem really stupid. You're gonna do it. They all want the big bus. Exactly. Like you know, you yes, have yes, they're careerists. Examples of you know, like CIA or whatever looking into like mosques, and then the yeah. mosque calls the government, like, "Yo, there's someone here trying to get some of our younger yeah, members yeah, to try yeah, to yeah, commit yeah. jihad," and the guy is like an FBI or CIA agent yeah, yeah. trying to like catch the next exactly. terrorist exactly. ring. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Damn right. Yeah. Yeah, though they're like they're or they're trying to they're trying to get people to do it so they yeah. can get they can pad the, everyone's stat padding. E everyone. That's the fucking thing is it's like once you really open your eyes, you see stat patterns everywhere. Yeah, because everyone doesn't want to get fired. Exactly. Everyone wants to get a promotion and like get a gold watch in fifty years. Exactly. And so so he gets charged with like two bullshit counts, even with only two counts of this, with like literally Dozens of victims. And I mean, there's way more than that than were even, you know, actually involved in the case. You know, mm -hmm. they've since identified like dozens more. But um, he goes to jail for less time than the guy who actually stole the black book. So his the person who, the reason we have the black book is because his ex like Butler stole it and tried to sell it to the prosecution, which rookie move because those. They do work for the government. Yeah. And they arrested him. That guy got did six more months in jail than Epstein did. I admire his moxie, though. Oh, absolutely. Like, he, honestly, I got the stolen thing. I'm going to sell it to a cop. I think it was like 40K or 25K. It's like, that's not even that much. Like, they should have just paid. I don't know. Just pay him. Yeah. Just call up. Uh, what's that website? Is, is it still like. Tyler Durden writes for what website? Oh, Zero Hedge? <laughs> yeah, just call it Zero Hedge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liz writes for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Zero Hedge. Yeah, yeah. call it Zero Hedge. They have, <laughs> they'll publish anything. Absolutely. Right for Zero Hedge? <laughs> no, Tyler, a woman can dream. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, so Epstein does. I mean, plea deal aside, he, or excuse me, NPA aside, his like time in jail is better than most of any of our lives probably out of jail. It's like Goodfellas. Beyond, the imagine bread, if they let the, the garlic. He, exactly. Which, by the way, I guess that doesn't work. Like you, no, it doesn't. Yeah. It looks so good though when it, it hits the so pan. Good. It turns out you just burn the shit out yeah. of the garlic. Yeah, it's too thin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, he, uh, he's out of jail for twelve hours a day to go to work at a foundation that he set up right before he goes into work in a giant office building that the police cannot enter, and that is like staff with maybe some like nineteen year old girls, and so he's literally having sex. While a cop waits outside downstairs, like protecting him from anybody that yeah. would come in and interrupt his. He's sex. like going home. He's going out to dinner with people, and then he gets back to the to Palm Beach County lockup, which he gets to be in like a nicer wing that I guess you can pay for. Which, I, again, I've been in jail. I, there's never been like an option like hey, for sixty bucks. Like they never upcharge me in jail. They just send you to jail. Right. It's and, just it's just jail. It's just jail. There's no, like but other jail in Palm Beach. There's just another jail that's nicer, mm -hmm. and his door is unlocked, and like he can basically do whatever he wants. Yeah. That doesn't sound like jail. No, that it just sounds, sounds like a building. You're yeah, like, the doors unlocked. Go in and out when you please. You can yeah. have sex. You just stay there, I guess. You know, and he has a lot of visitors during this time. I think oh, he's yeah. just in a hotel. Yeah, he's describing a hotel. It's just like a Sheraton. Yeah, well, sure, it's not great. No. Continental breakfast is trash. I know, but it's jail, so it's, it's jail. Like probably yeah. analogous. Yeah. Um, and then he gets out, and so it's, you know, it's like, it's 2000, it's 2007 he gets out, right, or 2008? I think it's 2008, 2007, 2008, yeah. And that's when he really starts going all in on, like, science stuff. Yeah, because mm -hmm. basically he's like, ah, shit, like, I just did jail, and some people don't really want to talk to me anymore. Like, he's not as tight with the Clintons, who that was really who he was tight with in, let's say, yeah. like, late 90s. I mean, yeah. in the heyday of the Clintons. So, yeah, yeah, let's let's back up a little bit, because yeah, yeah. late 90s, he all, so he had the place down in Florida, but he also had the ranch. Yeah, Zorro Ranch in New, Mexico. New Mexico. When, when did he get that? 
96 was it i love how you're looking at me like I'm gonna it was 94 96 something around that yeah mid 90s yeah bef- yeah and he just wanted like a remote location that he could take people to to do like getaways or well, off-site symposiums so yeah that- he had some like horrific tacky like wild west set yeah on mm-hmm. there it's just like a huge plot of land i gotta say new mexico weird state weird state that's where arian's from uh, Some weird where, shit where happens are you from there, there, man. I bet I was uh, beautiful. Um, <clears throat> I'm from Albuquerque. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's the only city that has people in it. I think. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, from yeah. what I understand. Well, Epstein's ranch right th- is right near also this giant Scientology vault that can apparently be seen from space. Although I've actually never tried to look, but it's she like the vault where maps. all their secret records are kept, or like like they can't even go there. Um, but he is really involved in who's that instant the Santa Fe Institute? Santa Fe Institute, which does some kind of weird I don't know. Which for book fans, Cormac McCarthy also a member. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um but I uh, do a little bit of like dabbling in esoteric science. Absolutely, stuff, yeah. For sure. And so did Epstein out there. I mean, his whole thing is there was this reporting about how he was trying to floating this idea if he could inseminate twenty girls a day. Uh, to repopulate the earth. Yeah, so basically... Yeah, repopulate, by the way, yeah, which, which begs you, the question, when did it depopulate? Yeah, so how Bill early Gates did you know about coronavirus? Bill yeah. Gates was like, chill, man, I'm, yeah. I'm working here. Well, that's what they were planning on the island. Well, maybe he thought it was going to happen earlier, but Bill Gates was stat patty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, basically, some of his... Some huge, like, uh, high-ranking geneticists at Harvard and stuff, like, basically were like, Scientists need funding for important work. If the yeah. funding is for illegitimate scientific work, there's nothing wrong with accepting yeah, support yeah. from a billionaire. However, it would be uh, wrong for scientists to accept his funding if they were aware that he was planning a eugenics experiment yes. that might draw <laughs> legitimacy, draw legitimacy from his associates with them. This was Professor George Church met. With, yeah, like, yeah. Some of his funding, he wanted access to geneticists. Yes, yes. and he's like, yo. Like <laughs> that's where they're dr- that's where the line is. We found it. Yeah, here's millions of Literally dollars. Eugenics. I just want to sit down with you guys, just run something by you. Yeah. Okay, genetics, so I have this ranch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah, like yeah. genetics in general is a discipline. I mean, there's a lot of fine lines there. It goes yeah. eugenic real quick. Yeah, absolutely. It's so, real hard to kind of like you know find whatever that whatever right. that ethical line is. Right. Ethics and genetics is just like it's pretty. Whoever's yeah, the loudest one in the room. Yeah. yeah pretty yeah, much yeah, defines yeah, yeah. where the line is. It's an, it's it's inevitable. It's yeah. Inevitable. Yeah. I, yeah. I I I fully agree with that. With especially yeah, with like CRISPR gonna, stuff. We yeah. had a guy. Yeah. On the show we're gonna, that, we're gonna we're gonna start with like uh, genetic like Huntington's disease. Yeah. Stuff like that. We're cancer stuff like that. And then we're gonna go on to like attributes that are yep. desirable. Yeah, right. well, yeah, and then bigger suddenly, nose, you know, bigger Christopher. noses yeah. on Jewish yeah, guys. Yeah, and suddenly they're like, "Oh, look at this one trait we find in all these types of people." Yeah, and it's yeah. like that's where it goes. It's real quick. Yeah, Maybe it's phenology have... for the tech set. Maybe they can cure lactose intolerant, so my <laughs> bloodline can have a nice glass of milk. Oh my God. I just like to be three inches taller. I'm, I'm not asking for the what. World are you, what are you working with? <laughs> Depending on which shoes, <laughs> depending on which shoes I'm wearing, on the ones day. you like the best. So the ones I like, to, these are really comfortable. They're just like slippers, basically. I'm probably five eight, uh-huh. five eight and a half right now. I just like five eleven, so I could lie and say I was, I was six feet tall. Yeah, that's yeah. all I want. I, I don't do, actually, you know, I just feet. do that already. Yeah, just say you're six. People feet. can't tell. The technology still isn't exactly there for that. Yeah, I just tell girls I'm six two. I'm like, no, that guy who's like actually six. I'm like, he's seven four. He's in the NBA. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Also, he has Marfa's disease, which Joey Ramone and Abraham Lincoln had, which means he's probably got a really skinny, fucked up dick too, like uh-huh. a, and a real <laughs> high pitched voice and a high pitched voice. Yeah. Also, yeah, that's yeah. a lot of, that's a lot of hater vibes right there, though. Man. Just, <laughs> just say you're six two and keep it moving, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 That, that's all, guys. <laughs> Extra chromosome, yeah, exactly. X Y Y. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I can tell he's got the syphilis that you can't cure. <laughs> So he smell it. Yeah, he's got the pom- he's got he's got Zorro Ranch. He's got the townhouse. He's got the Palm Beach house. But that's also when he gets the island. Yes. And I gotta say, much like the guys mm. in suits with Uzis, the guy is not. If any guy is a private island, you just bet. Yeah. On barstoolbets.com <laughs> that he is doing something fucked up yeah. out there. Yeah, ladies, if your man has a private island, red flag. Yes. That is that's you, probably true. You are in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
I'm trying to think who has an island. <laughs> Nobody has, has an it's island. Richard dude. Well, Richard no, thing, he's bad too, dude. But yeah. here's the thing now. Now, because of Epstein, all, everyone who owns an island is like, I don't own an island. Yeah. Like, oh, that now thing? island's bad. Mm-hmm. It's dude, not cool everyone anymore. Everyone <laughs> used to want to buy it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be chill. No one really knew why. Yeah. So what's the new thing that you like? You want to buy an isthmus? A uh, spaceship rocket. Yeah, yeah rocket's yeah. a new rocket, thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. honestly. NFTs. 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 Yeah, NFTs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so he's got this island, Little St. He's actually got two. He's got Little St. James and, and Great St. James. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously he likes Little St. James a little mm-hmm. more. Um, <laughs> and this is where, he, you know, it is, and this is going back to the 90s. He's hosting scientific conferences there. He's having a lot of um, wealthy visitors mm-hmm. come there. And he's also having, according to testimony from some of these girls, Girls flown in from like Eastern Europe. And so like we know a lot of the testimony of the American victims of Jeffrey Epstein, some British ones too, and there's French people that have sort of come forward as well. But a big missing puzzle of this is there is a huge component of girls that come from Eastern Europe. And one of them that we know about is a woman named Nadia Marchinkova or Nadia Marchinko. She kind of, hmm. she's changed it a couple of times, who is rumored to have purchased from, I believe, former Yugoslavia in the 1990s. Uh, in her early teenage years purchased purchased yes that's confirmed straight up well there's no like receipt or anything but that's that's that was the terminology used in like reporting on it is purchased Mm -hmm. and so jeffrey epstein was friends with a guy and this is how sort of i think this probably came about because she is she's a very beautiful woman i mean she's she's uh you know there's she's still around she worked for him for a long time um Mm -hmm. and so but so i think it was probably via modeling um, because mm. Jeffrey Epstein sort of fancied himself, he had a modeling agency. Wexner, exactly. Wexner. Yeah, Secret. he would go. Yeah, precisely. One, one of the one of the uh, when girls would be crying, leaving uh, Epstein's townhouse. Jo- yeah, wasn't Ghislaine who would talk to like the drivers, people working there, like, oh, she didn't get the modeling. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. But so but Epstein was up. also friends with this guy named Jean Luc Brunel, who was a. I don't know how to describe him in one sentence, but a, a modeling agent in every worst way that you can mean that. Yeah. Wait a second. I just got a flashback. Did anybody ever in malls know those people who used to like be like, oh, do you want to be a child model? Yeah. Is that – am I – Am I crazy or is that was a thing? That right? was a thing. They'd yeah. be like, "Do you want to do a fashion show?" And it was like a fashion show for Claire's or Old Navy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, totally. Or the limited two. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so am I too conspiracy brain being like, "Holy shit, they're involved." No, because I was like, their parents just, were there, and it was just like walk down the stage. I think then- in general modeling, like the modeling world, is pretty horrific. Like maybe yeah. it's not so much at like the local commu- like local malls. Although you go kind of move up the food chain and that's how a lot of girls get discovered. A lot of beautiful girls get discovered is at these kind of local events, right? Um whether it's in America or overseas or whatever. But I mean, the f- agency and I want to use like big quotation marks around that that mm. these guys were running Brunel and Epstein um like the shit that they were doing was horrific yeah mm-hmm. yeah i mean it was mc2 mc2 yeah which is like there was the whole thing about e equals mc squared that epstein had i don't know e. like, okay it's, yeah it's it was very stupid it's so stupid that i think it's true that yeah. like oh it's like e equals mc squared but there's the he's a silent partner but brunel was a like a modeling like a ma- talent uh, basically like a talent scout for decades mm-hmm. in like France and stuff. And he hung out with like John Casablancas, the guy from the Strokes' his dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and like all of these other, like that Eileen Ford and elite yeah. models and all these fucking like, you know, the big names. But he was also like, a, like even more than Epstein in that world, like a notorious rapist. No, he was like such a big rapist that 60 Minutes did an episode on how big of a rapist he was in the 80s. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. When, like, That's really... Everyone was like, rape's fake. Then. That's really yeah. creepy, yeah. And, like, and he... But he kept it's like, going. like, this guy's got a real cocaine problem. Exactly. Well, they, they showed that, too, actually. They actually <laughs> yeah, showed so, him doing blow in it. Yeah. yeah. Just fact-checked. So it turns out the mall modeling agencies, the scam was just to get you to buy courses. That makes okay. sense. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Like, that, beauty model. Fuck. Yeah. That's yeah. actually... I should Dude, with, make sense. With all these conspiracy I'm gonna things... I'm going to do that, but with podcasting. Yeah. I hear it, and I'm like, oh, shit, are there, like, a bunch of, you know, child traffickers in malls across America just mm. looking to get these people? Yeah. But then I got to be like, okay, okay, let's be rational. It's Search it up. Mm-hmm. How is this a scam? Okay, we're teaching it's a about, scam. Yeah, yeah, we're teaching yeah, yeah. The thing is, I have news. to literally go through these mental things because yeah. I'm a, a 
22 year old on the internet i'm getting <laughs> seeing all this type of shit yeah you're seeing all this stuff in the news like how do you connect the dots and not like I'm proud be of you radicalized both. absolutely yeah well it's it's i mean so epstein buys this buys this girl probably via brunel and uh and brings her back to america and like th there's like i mean she basically stays with him for decades in fact i think she's one of the co-conspirators who's covered under the mpa <laughs> and like there's I mean, she's the one that we know about, but there's like reports of like dozens of others that E66 like apartment building you were talking yeah. about that uh, several of those apartments in that building were four girls from out of the country that yeah. Epstein said, according to testimony from the uh, accountant from yeah. the modeling agency that Epstein and Brunel could get fucking not only visas for, but American passports for via contact in the State Department. Yeah, the only way you can do that was with a very high level contact in the State Department. Dude, it's such a, it's hard to get a passport as an American citizen, dude. It's such a fucking hassle. Yeah. And some crazy people moving in and out of that E66 apartment. Kimball Musk, Elon <laughs> Musk's brother, dated a girl who lived in that apartment building, like one of Epstein's girls for years. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I know. So I got, I got, I got a question. I'm about to jump in the gun. But, I, um, okay, so what, as a girl. Uh, oh, wait. Hold, wait. Hold, on, oh, hold on, 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 Big celebrity names that we know of. Mm. How many are implicated in the child sex trafficking uh, fiasco? Like how many? Like because I, you hear the flight logs, you hear all the stuff. But yeah. then you guys were saying he had an island where he was doing science conferences, trying yeah. to be clear his name. So that doesn't necessarily indict everybody on his flight logs, in my yeah. opinion. But like, how many do we know confirmed or, or, or speculated to have gone down that path? Well, I know Prince Andrew is the most confirmed of the confirmed ones. You know what I mean? Like there's actual testimony from girls saying that he was involved um, yeah. from multiple girls, including him using a puppet of his likeness, which is if you Google Prince Andrew spitting image, it is that puppet and it's fucking disgusting. Um, but uh, him, Alan Dershowitz is confirmed um, to have participated, although. Oh, wait, actually, let me be clear. Alan Dershowitz is alleged by some victims to have participated in this, but I myself am not accusing you, Alan Dershowitz, if you hear this. <laughs> yeah, Please do it. not sue me. I'm a huge fan of your non-pedophile work, if that work does exist <laughs> on either side of this. Uh, please don't sue me. Um, Quick sidebar. Just found this photo recently. Yeah. yeah. You seen this? Yeah, yeah that yeah. was Queens. released at the trial. Yeah, yeah. so it's Ghislaine Epstein sitting in a log cabin and then there's the queen mother and someone else sitting another old lady next to the queen mother sitting yeah. at a log cabin. I can almost say it's definitely the log, the same log cabin just from markings on the wood. Oh, for sure. As well yeah. as the hill and trees in the background of the photo. Wait, so you said that was in the trial? Yeah, that was the that photo, photo they released came out in the trial. So yeah. that's real. That's, that's real. real. Yeah. Oh, so I sent it to because Billy loves things okay, that I may get, or may not be. I, yeah, I, yeah, I do yeah. a lot Ooh, of me research. Too. I sent yeah, yeah, it to yeah. our to our group message a few days ago, and I was like, "This is for sure fake, but it'll get Billy riled up." Yeah. And so that's real. No, that's real. That's real. Yeah. It was they put the it on the screen of the trial, and, and stuff. the BBC reporters were definitely like, "This is the Queen's estate in Balmoral." They already knew, like off top, because they're like sicko Brits. Yeah. Yeah. I love the royal family. Other other people that have been sort of well uh, confirmed but confirmed by just one victim uh, or some some of them are corroborated is george mitchell um can't remember who it was but the a former i can't remember his exact name george but mitchell he, former head of the was it the cia or the fbi no he was a uh he was a new mexican pol new mexico politician wait didn't didn't Same. he do the report on baseball I think he did the report on PEDs and different maybe George a Mitchell. Different Mitchell. Yeah, okay. different George right. Mitchell. Today. Got it. Um, and uh, a a former Spanish prime minister who I can't remember the fucking name of because I thought it was a different guy for a long time, but it's it's almost assuredly um, this other guy. I'll, I'll get I'll get the name once I get my phone out. Um, but uh, beyond that, who else? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, George J. Mitchell. Oh, it's the 20, same one. Yeah. God damn it! He's why we can't have. Jack dudes hitting home runs because he was taking all the adrenochrome. <laughs> I think He's we figured, I think we figured this out, Billy. This is your patient zero. So <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, so so yeah, you were saying like some people that have been confirmed by one or two sources. Mitchell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mitchell, um, former Spanish. 
Well, he was a politician, but Alec Baldwin. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, American politician. Um, beyond that, like Bill Clinton's not confirmed by any of the victims. He's confirmed to be on the flights, and he's confirmed. To, well, he's rumored to have been on the islands and at the ranch. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, there's but, rumors of there's staff at the ranch who came out and said that Bill and Hillary vacationed there. Yes. Which is very odd. Yeah. There's, Just knowing the layout of that ranch and knowing it's like a weird fake western set basically it's like why would you go there on vacation i may have missed this when i went out to pee real quick and by the way getting in and out of this room is so hard i, know. I felt yeah. like <laughs> Catherine zeta jones what's that movie where she's like diving between the lasers yeah that's what i was thinking i was like i could be working for the cia doing this shit yeah um but maybe you guys cover this but how did um how did the clintons meet jeffrey epstein do we know that well you know i, 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 I actually the, don't know the spanish politician was by the way jose maria Aznar. Okay. Yeah, um, but uh, who's got a really tied up with Al Gore? Um, I don't actually know how they met either. I don't know, but I do think that possibly it could have been through Ghislaine. I think it was through yeah. Ghislaine because Liz is big on this. It's exceedingly likely that Ghislaine fucked Bill Clinton. Yes. Like mm. almost. Like I, I, I'll go. I'll Let's go. See. I'll, I'll back that. Like with yeah, it, I, they, they, there's like rumors of them, I, like long how do we, rumors. I, and then to spell the T, how do we know? How do we notice? There's like a lot of like uh, circa '90s tabloid speculation about Bill Clinton and Ghislaine Maxwell canoodling yes. in that like tabloid way they would talk about it mm-hmm. at various eateries on the Upper East Side. He's seen, not him personally. There was a party that was thrown at Epstein's townhouse, mm-hmm. I believe, a dinner party for Ron Burkle, who's Clinton's like. Like, right-hand guy. Like, you cannot get to Bill Clinton without going through Ron Burkle. This yeah. is in the 90s. Like this he, is, like, he, when he was president. And, like, he'll send Burkle out. Like, if Clinton's fucking a girl, he sends Burkle out to, like, take her shopping and shit like that. Like, huh. he's, like, he's his His, his bag man. Yeah, his bag okay. man. Yeah. In, so, trying to rationalize this. If I was trying to sell tabloids yeah. in the 90s and Bill Clinton just got caught with the whole scandal and everything. Yeah, yeah. I'd definitely be just writing tons of articles of who else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Ghislaine wasn't that big of a name, though. That's the thing. It's like, I mean, she was somewhat notorious from like. She's like society person. Exactly. Yeah. It's but like, it's, it's not, not someone's like, gonna be like, he's fucking Nicole Kidman. Right. You yeah, know, yeah, page yeah. six or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Then you yeah. might know who she is. And, but the thing, the funny thing is, though, they did go through it during the trial. They they showed us some some uh, receipts from FedEx. And they were trying to actually show us that Ghislaine Maxwell did not send these presents to one of the uh, victims. And they were showing, oh, well, she did send these packages. And the three packages she sent was one was to her sister and uh, the other one was to a woman I actually had never heard of before. Um, And then the other was to Ron Burkle. So and this is. Yeah. So it's you know, she's uh, this was in the early 2000s. So she like she kept in close, close contact and just came out that Clinton that. Epstein probably visited the Clinton White House around 13 times. 17. 17 times. 17 oh, wow. times. Jesus, barely, almost legal. Yeah, he donated a bunch of money. You know, <laughs> we should say too, I mean, Epstein in was Mexico, like in like political circles. He was on the Council of Foreign Relations. So he's like going to all yeah. of these like bullshit dinners that they're kind of doing. He's yeah. like, he's in with schmoo- the Trilateral Commission. Yeah, he's doing all of it. So it, he's all, Ghislaine was also like very close friends with Chelsea Clinton, which is yeah, weird. This is something that never gets reported on. But fucking Chelsea Clinton and Ghislaine Maxwell went on a fucking yacht trip together in like 2008. I want to say like how after many Epstein's arrest. Yacht? We know of four. Yeah. Chelsea Clinton's like ugly ass husband. Uh, and who's the, the founder? You sound jealous, Bruce. Well, listen, Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea's He's not half a, the man you are. Chelsea is a nasty woman, <laughs> um, in more ways than what. Chelsea, okay. if you're listening, Chelsea, if you're a bar stool head, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I long, be long time stoolie. Yeah. You're lo- if you're if you're a stoolie, mm-hmm. come visit me at the Sheraton Tribeca <laughs> anytime between two a.m. and four a.m. and I will give you the craziest fifteen second shag of your life, okay. lady. I will. We'll have so you. I'll get you in the tribe. Don't worry. I, I love you. Anyway, so uh, the founder of Gateway Computers, uh, whose last yeah. name I can't remember, but I think first it's name Mike White. Or no, t- it's like Tom Watts. Tom Gateway Wait? Computers. Yeah, Gateway Computers founder. White. 
It's they had like great boxes. Ted Waite. With the Ted Waite. Ted Waite. Warm weight. Yeah, and it's Ted warm. Waite is was Ghislaine Maxwell's post Epstein boyfriend, and he's friends with the Clintons. And uh-huh. so a little yacht trip with Ghislaine, uh, Chelsea, Ted Waite, and Ghislaine's or Chelsea's soon to be ex husband. Epstein got picked up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's- yeah. That's at the very least, she's guilty of poor judgment. Exactly. Well, because it's for like not dating Brace. Well, yeah, but like if you're on a yacht trip with a chick whose ex boyfriend just got arrested in like a pretty because you know it was reported on like a high profile like child sex thing, mm-hmm. uh, wouldn't you be like, what was up with that? So I, <laughs> I noticed you used the B word right there, boyfriend. Yeah. Now that isn't that like up for debate? Were they actually boyfriend and girlfriend? So you know what's crazy? So much of the trial has been spent on like speculating the nature of their relationship and i mean literally like the prosecution asking everyone like straight up first question is always like so what was up with them yeah Yeah, like like, what was the vibe yeah what did you think when you first met them did you think they were like together and every single person is like well i think that maybe they kind of were in a relationship but it's unclear and they were friendly but like i don't know like no one has nailed down the actual nature of their relationship which i find so crazy Hmm. to the point that I kind of think the prosecution doesn't actually know. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that that Ghislaine, she wishes that she was like she wanted to be? His, oh well, his that that is so. We actually do have that from uh, a civil deposition she gave in I think 2016, where she was asked uh, when she was being deposed, uh, like, what was the nature of your you know relationship with Epstein? Where was he your boyfriend? She's like, well, I think at times I wished he was. It's it's clear. That Ghislaine is was at least in love with Jeffrey Epstein. It is very unclear if Jeffrey Epstein gave a shit about that. She whatsoever. was like trying to trying to tame him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The well, bad, the chicks dig the bad boy. I definitely think she was she was running him in one way, but yeah, he uh, he. It, it's it's really unclear because it does seem like they dated at least until the mid nineties, like fully. Like I mean, they but were. But then she stays on and is basically working yeah. for him. I mean, they uh-huh. were still. I mean, while they were dating, they were you know. Pred- pred- predating predationing they were being predators towards young girls hunting hunting together? exactly yeah. hunting but partners. Uh, which also Jesus. continued after they dated or after their relationship officially ended it makes no sense it makes zero sense but to me. this is also why like it i think it's so important to find out when they actually met and how yeah yep. like it's not it's like okay wait were they introduced and if so who introduced them was it through her father mm-hmm. why because that changes the entire like origin story of this relationship you yeah. know what i mean yeah absolutely. maybe at some point she like falls for him okay but maybe there was a different arrangement from the beginning it was like i think I you guys know. could work really well together yeah your skills match up with this person's exactly skills. yeah yeah jeffrey is very good at entrapping people into compromising situations he's Glenn. good at money moving money yeah. yeah who knows who knows i i don't know but like no one can nail down the actual like dates and nature of this relationship what i'm interested to see is if the defense does yeah if they try to bring that up uh-huh. i th- it's just speculation but i would imagine that if you're if it is like a, a honeypot type operation where they're trying yeah. to mm-hmm. entrap people and get you know absolutely black yeah. pictures or videos probably be a little bit easier for clientele as older dudes if you have a younger woman for sure that is like reassuring you like this is okay this is great yeah, isn't it yeah. like yeah that that's me seems like billy's about to rip some more smelling salts. oh dude are I you really it. about to do are you about to hit the smelling salts? i've i've, I've kind of started using them recreationally it's kind He's of bad because have yeah, you tried poppers i don't understand we, is it poppers no no no, no, no. It's, it's 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 ammonia it smells no, like ammonia it's, it's what's it, poppers can I get a water? What is it? <laughs> yeah, no, wait, no, I know what it is. Nothing to worry about. You're pretty low. It's for boys only. <laughs> yeah. no. I, I used to live on no, Christopher I Street, and I'd, I'd walk chemical. to you the train mean. station, and I'd walk out on a, like a Sunday morning, just poppers oh, everywhere. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I didn't street. even know that gay guys used poppers. Oh, yeah. I thought yeah. they were, well, when I was younger, I was like, this is just some other shit that we huff. Yeah. Like, we huff all kinds <laughs> of shit. My, we huff this, too. My and butthole the, getting relaxed was just a nice side effect. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is just whippets, but liquid. Yeah. No, it's just like getting a slap in the face. That it's, thing? Oh, it's yeah. It's just irritating your... Knee. It's so irritating. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it helps me wake... So, we have a weird He's turnaround. salts alone now. He's got a yeah. problem. I This used to be next to my bed to wake up on Monday mornings <gasps> after working late on Sunday nights. <laughs> 
to prepare for this podcast. We do work very late on Sundays. Yeah. And then I have to prepare for this, this podcast for you on Monday. So like I wake up, rip the salts, wake up, I'm like, okay. Rip, now, rip the salts? salts? Yeah. Yeah, well, just like, now, now I gotta shit. research Jeffrey Epstein for three hours before I get into work. No wonder this motherfucker be consecutive. You're taking... Smelling salts no, recreationally? No, it, it's supposedly for powerlifting. Have power you tried lifting. coffee? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, we're, we're, we're Do you want to buy some season. Adderall? <laughs> no, He's no. a big green tea person. I, he got off, he doesn't take his, uh, his childhood ADD medication anymore. So this no, is what he replaced it with. Mm. I'm so glad that I got to introduce Dude, you guys. Dude, he closed to one nostril. Oh my God. Well, cause you gotta, if one's blocked up. Yeah, that and looks other, normal and very healthy and very cool. It's, just, it's my problem. Let me hit that. No. Yeah. No, <laughs> you'll like it. Don't don't get it too close. I'm telling you, like I no, breathed no, no, it into no, no, my mouth. Glass on. It's bad. Um, there's oh, there you go. Oh. I that was just a wait. Okay, it's wait. a baby. You, you, you got to let it touch your brain. You can waft. Wafting helps. It gives you like a baby. So dose. football players do that on the sidelines to like wake up like before kickoff. This is I feel so powerful. Yeah. <laughs> you can do anything. Uh there there is like a weird football type related uh side tangent that I, i'd like to just like tell you guys about because you guys might not even heard about this but um there's a lawsuit going on right now the former president of the washington redskins that's what they were called when he was a president of the team uh is engaged in a lawsuit against the current owner dan snyder mm -hmm. because there was a, a blog that was published in <clears throat> india that listed Dan Snyder's name as being on the Epstein yeah, flight logs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, there's absolutely no evidence to back it up. It was just a random blog that came out and got very little traction. It looked like like a haphazard hit piece. It's that not like did. Times of India. It's like... No, it's just like it's a website that they hosted in India and then some sock puppet accounts like mm -hmm. retweeted. Yeah, basically. yeah, 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 yeah. Or like dot biz situation. Yeah, yeah. Something really like low rent. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the current... The owner of the team, Dan Snyder, his name was... I don't know if it was directly stated or it was heavily implied yeah. that he was on the he was on the uh, Epstein flight logs. And so Dan Snyder is now suing the former president of the team, Bruce Allen, who is the son of George Allen, who was uh, the coach of the team. And Bruce Allen's brother was the governor of Virginia for a while. Yeah. OK, so um, that they've uh, they've they've sued Bruce Allen because they say that he's trying to get back at Dan Snyder for being fired. So he set up the blog? By setting up a blog over in India to try to... I, hope I gotta say, out. setting up a blog saying that a guy is on the Epstein flight logs and be like, check this out, man. That's actually... That's so deviant. You should be in charge. Yeah, so, I mean, that <laughs> as a, a person who grew up rooting for the Washington football team, yeah, there are very few things that can surprise me about Dan Snyder. When I saw that, I was like, I was halfway surprised. I was like, yeah. wow, I didn't think he was a pedophile. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But apparently, I don't know, there's been definitely like no corroboration to it whatsoever. Yeah, it's yeah, just like yeah. a little, it's like succession with the dumbest people in the world running that team. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Yeah, it That's all teams. Yeah, really. I'm sorry. Turns I mean, out you don't have to be smart to be a, a team owner. In fact, well, I, money in fact most people are very stupid. I, I kind of distrust anybody that becomes a billionaire and and they don't buy a sports team yeah. because that's like the ultimate toy. Oh, right? See, yeah. I was a Niners fan when I was a kid growing up. And so we had the problem of the Yorks owned the team mm -hmm. and they kind of like threw Eddie under the bus who was like managing the team. They were all doing like shady stuff, yep. but they threw Eddie under, send him to the feds and now that, and then the York, whatever. Then they moved the team out of San Francisco. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's like San a Mateo whole curse. It's tough. Silicon Valley 49ers, the whole curse. It's like a ever hour since and a half. they threw Eddie under. Oh, yeah. It's like let him do the shady stuff. Like don't, you know, whatever. They threw Eddie under the bus, let him get nibbed by the nabbed by the feds, and now let him get nibbed too. Yeah, they mm -hmm. get it, they let him have a role. Snip but it's it like up. you're not getting another young. You're not getting another Montana. Like you're done. You're over. Mm -hmm. So you're you fucking Silicon Valley Facebook 49ers now. You're not buying the Jimmy G. No. He's so attractive though. No, he's what? awful. He's so attractive. No, yeah. Montana is an attract. That is a fucking quarterback. Like, like Jimmy G looks like a hologram of a quarterback. He does. He he's looks, fake. Yeah. He looks like a fake quarterback. He's I will, too good looking. I will forever think the most attractive quarterback to ever be in the NFL is Brady Quinn by a large margin. Yeah, I mean, he was only in the league for what, like three, four years. He's still he, a good looking guy. He is. Doesn't shave. He doesn't have any facial. He's hairs, gorgeous. 
He's like a specimen. He also had the oh, most yeah, fuckable spiral. Looking. He threw a really good spiral. And he's also from Ohio. Oh, whoa. 5'8"? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Brady Quinn's not 5'8". Yeah, no. that's what it says here on Wikipedia. He's like 6'3". Six, six, three. No, three. that says centimeters of that number. Let's see. No, he's 6'4". <laughs> yeah, he's a big he's guy. Huge. Yeah. He looks so, like a 90s heartthrob, like 90s teen heartthrob. Yeah, he yeah. could have been on Saved by the Bell. He looked yeah, too totally. much like his name was Brady Quinn. He was the quarterback at Notre yeah, Dame. Yeah, 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 It yeah. was like a little too You sound made those. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when you're like, oh, maybe they're, we are in a simulation. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, all right. So we've kind of touched on the Clintons a little bit. Trump, I have to Trump. assume, just got to know Jeffrey because they ran in the same circles, both in New York and also yeah. in Palm Beach. Or was there, was there a deeper connection there? Well, Trump also flew on the jet a yeah. couple times. In and fact, Epstein we, flew on Trump's jet. We heard about a new flight during this trial as well, flying down to Florida with him. So Trump, I don't think that Trump participated, or I have no reason necessarily to believe that Trump participated with the young girls. I do know with pretty good confidence that like, you know, if you're in the modeling world, right, and you're a guy with a lot of money in the modeling world, and especially if you're running modeling stuff internationally, there is a lot of shady shit that you're going to get yeah, into. 100%. And um, I mean, yeah, Trump models. Is you no buy, exception. you know, it's like these people basically buy and sell girls. Yeah. Geez. Maybe in a slightly more efficient way or not efficient, but like slightly more above above the board way. But uh-huh. like that's still what they're doing. The, the quote that Trump had about Epstein it's worst quote you could ever have about the guy. But I, I think that's kind of how the guy does business where yeah. he, he was like letting Jeffrey know, like, I know about you. And exactly. he, I think the, the quote was something like, Jeffrey loves women and yeah. it's no secret. He really likes them young. Yes. You know, like he's just putting that out there. Yeah, exactly. Because if you say like, why? Like, here's the thing is like in Trump's world, it's like there's a lot of guys with 19 year old girlfriends. And so it's like yeah. saying that someone's Could young is not himself. that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And saying like, you know, so he likes young girls implies something a little more than, you know, 19. Jeez. Trump, Trump and Epstein did have a falling out at one point. Um, yeah, probably Epstein about, got banned from Mar-a-Lago. Yes, um, although Ghislaine, well, that was before then, I guess. And also, didn't he offer up documents during the 05, 04, 05 trial? Who did Trump? Yeah. That, okay, that hand up. That might be something I've I read. That that. I don't think so. Confirmed. Yeah, so me, I, I think me... I, you know what? I think he might have been subpoenaed for some phone record, but that's because a or lot of possibly the... having to do with Mar-a-Lago. Because yeah, a Mar-a-Lago one the, thing. Probably one of the victims. Um, was a masseuse at Mar-a-Lago when, when she was kind of picked up and recruited by Ghislaine. Yeah. In, in fact, um, it was described sort of at the trial by the guy who was driving the car, Juan Alessi, uh, that he was like, Ghislaine yelled out like, stop, and like got out of the car and went up to this, you know, teenage girl and like gave her Jeffrey Epstein's phone number and he saw her at the house later that day. And, you know, huh. it's Virginia Jeffrey, sort of the most like well-known victim. But she was a masseuse or she wasn't a masseuse, excuse me. She just worked at Mar-a-Lago, I think, at the spa. You know, she's a I teenage girl. Like receptionist. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like, she I, wasn't actually a masseuse. I would love to know what their falling out was. It's apparently over real estate. I've heard different things. Like, Trump you know, real estate, right? I have no idea. I have. I imagine it's something, but it's some money thing. Yeah, that's so th- what I imagine. Trump doesn't give a fuck about it. Trump banned know? Jeffrey Epstein from Mar-a-Lago after sex criminal hit on member's daughter. Book claims. Mm. Okay. Which book? Uh, a new book entitled "The Grifters Club." Doesn't say who. Never heard of that. Yeah, this Horrible could be. Name, I like, better be in it. Grifters Club. Yeah, ban a new book says. Let me say, see who wrote the. New I mean, book. could be. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, there's no like, I mean, Epstein was pretty like, or excuse me, Trump was pretty like, you know, mealy mouth, not mealy mouth, excuse me, like wishy washy about it when it was kind of when it came up during his presidency. He's like, oh, I didn't really know the guy, you know. It's like, and there's that incredible photo of Trump and Ghislaine. Like oh, yeah. where she's like in like With this Melania. like the suit. Yeah. Oh no no no. The one where he's like standing there like looking ahead in front of the white background and she's got like this little oh, suit thing yeah, on. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a rare rare Galane looking rare good Ghislaine. in that photo. So w- when they finally get around to arresting Jeffrey Epstein, 2019, 2019, mm. and you guys you guys started talking about this what like 2015? No, 2016? well, no, we we we've talked about it for a while, but we started the podcast in 2019. Yeah, okay. when he was but, arrested, we started the podcast. Yeah, but when when the papers came out, that's when you guys got really into it, right? Yeah, yeah. When I started, well, when the the, the black books, or I think it was Gawker that first put it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the black book got put out because it's, it's in fucking insane, right? It's like 
every person that you don't like, you could just look their name up and it'll be in that motherfucker mm -hmm. with like 15 different phone numbers. And also, a lot of those phone numbers still work for a long time. Yeah. Alan Dershowitz is still works. I know Rudy Giuliani still picks up his phone. Oh, dude, you can get him too. You By the way, number? you want Borat should have let him fuck that lady. Yeah, I well, she was like 30. I see where you're coming from. They yes. should she he should have let he should have let Rudy break off a little piece. But I'll what give you his I number. I want to know is wasn't there a, I would love his number. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't the Borat movie. It was the or maybe it was like the first Borat movie. I can't remember. Uh -huh. Maybe it's Ali G movie where he was filming in Vegas and he said that he found he like happened upon like actual child trafficking oh yeah he asked the he fbi asked, yeah. but like never heard anything about it yeah there was yeah he asked a major d or not a major d like yeah i guess one of those hotel like guys who tells you where stuff is yeah yeah, uh, yeah. what where he could get like really young prostitutes he was like i can hook you up and he reported the fbi and never heard back from them wow jeez and they're sort of like hey wait what happened with that one so um, so after <laughs> after epstein gets arrested mm -hmm. um and maybe you can walk us through like why they went back to him why they decided the time was right to arrest him i mean i assumed he'd be cut loose at that point like his name was too like it was you know like his he, it was out that he was doing what he was doing right like people knew about it and so like any any sort of utility he'd have like if you're talking like in spy terms, like your cover would have been blown essentially, mm -hmm. because if you're the guy who's famous for being a pedophile, no one's going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll have sex with a 15 year old kid in this like camera room. Right. That's why you went with the rebrand. of Now I'm just into science. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm trying yeah, yeah. to spread my seed. Not, because I'm a philanthropist. The yeah. block was too hot. He and couldn't do his old shit. Had... If your man is a philanthropist, red flag. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. I'm just a good person. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do for my job. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Oh, me? No questions asked. The orphan yeah. carer? <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> um, but so, I mean, he pretty, pretty much outlived his usefulness. And I think it had gotten a little too blatant because he was still doing what he was doing mm -hmm. and uh yeah they, you know when do you think he's th this is a little off when do you think he started like that's hard to say you know back to the dalton days like well there's no there's no there's no one that's come out and said that he did it there like there's it said people that said he was weird and like a little flirty but like yeah. you know that that's there's a lot but of this teachers also like goes that. back to the wall street thing i mean a, again i know ace greenberg whatever but that name is like in conjunction everyone's seen like wolf of wall street right mm -hmm. knows the like insanity that these guys were up to in the late 70s and early 80s like wall street had just been deregulated it was like a fucking like like cocaine festival. was really good like mm -hmm. no but it was crazy i mean and so the the amount of parties they were having but they were also using prostitutes that then would get stuff on other like other bankers that then they would use against each other. I mean, it's the kind of stuff we were talking about, you know, Jeez. you're getting blackmail from all of these things. It's, you know, so it's kind of like all these different industries that he was in was using these same sorts of tactics, you know? So, yeah. So, so the videotapes that were uncovered or some of the computer files. You mentioned Spitzer. That's a classic, classic that, uh, honeypot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they, they had, there were, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's like video, they, there were video files on some of his computers. Well, so we have we we have long known that in his safe there was a bunch of CDs or there was basically there was files of some kind like that when they when they when they got the stuff from his safe in uh in the 2019 raid on his townhouse that you know you get the the fucking picture of um that they they recovered files from that we never heard anything about them again until last week when it was the FBI agent who led that raid came out and said that we actually we actually found a bunch of binders of CDs and dude the picture of the dude, binders these of binders CDs, <laughs> I've never seen binders I've that never, big. it's like the kind Wait. of binders like you're studying to be like a fucking like lawyer or something so like back in the day before iPods and stuff yeah. I remember like my my mom used to loves music would have these binders of yeah. CDs yeah. of Same. music and we yeah. case through logic. it. No, these yeah, these yeah. were not those. These were yeah, like classic uh -huh. your classic binder, like but huge. School binder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like a t like 10 inch binder, 15 of them. I used to keep that like are baseball full, cards in there. Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Full of plastic yeah. sleeves yeah. Magic. Yeah. of CDs. They said that on these CDs, the FBI, one of the FBI agents, real good looking gal, estimated 38,000 Jesus images Christ. okay oh by the way we got to talk about real quick the makeup of the townhouse 
Oh, How, yeah. 44 rooms. Yeah. Yes. Stuff, tiger, stuff, dog, w- w- eyeballs. Weird art. Or, or just the security the system picture, right? where he's yeah. collecting yeah. the content. Yes. He, there's a one room with tons of in the front. security, security yeah. cameras, cameras in all sorts of places in what looked like 44 bedrooms yeah. in the townhouse. So, I mean, I'm sure it's like, it, the thing is, 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 you know, Epstein's no, I mean, he is kind of a schmuck, but like, Ghislaine's no schmuck. And, you know, you're having these guys, you're having Prince Andrew, even if you're friends with Prince Andrew, you're having Prince Andrew over and he's getting with some young girls consistently in a room in your house. You're putting the camera up there. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it's like, you you know, you sort of extrapolate this further to it's like, you know, the guy knows how to make money, right? He's he's a rise and grind type pedophile where he's like, you know, he's hustling. Mm -hmm. And so it's like. You know, for whatever reason he was doing this, for whatever, if he was doing it for an agency, if he was doing it for himself, whatever reason. As a reason, consultant. As a consult, exactly. <laughs> However this was going down, it's like, you know, you're having Ehud Barak, the former prime minister of Israel, visited Epstein's townhouse between 10 and 100 times and would leave with like fucking like basically uh, ironically sort of dressed like a, you know, like an old Arab fighter from the 40s or something like with like a, you know, basically in a in a, in a kefi. Uh-huh. Um but uh, you know, it's like it, it, it. You have leverage over these guys, and like, you know, it's a honeypot. So we're gonna find out what was on those CDs. So that's the thing: is we get all these CDs. They show us that we didn't know about all these other CD binders. This had not been reported on. We see the existence of this huge amount of CDs, and then they show us that they also collected two thin binders of CDs from the safe, external hard drives, etc. The crazy thing about that is oh, and and lots of velvet boxes of diamonds. Yes, and the, the passport. And the passport. we heard a gun, but no gun. Which, mm-hmm. if anyone out there knows what kind of gun Jeffrey Epstein had, please let me know because I would... he didn't have a gun. His bodyguards had guns. No, no, he did have a gun. Part of his rules for his for his housekeeper to put his yeah. gun in his fucking oh. bedside table when uh, he came back to the Florida house. Mm-hmm. So do we think he was Mossad? I I mean, listen, the lady's dad. Was yeah. in like well not I mean he he wasn't reporting to the office every day yeah. but he was a Mossad asset. I mean you honestly, know? it would be conspiracy brain. It would be pretty easy to take a guy and manufacture a, like a someone you know who like manufacture a humble beginnings. Yeah, that would be easier to manufacture and then insert him no college degree, but mm. then. Like could, like, could he have been run from like the, the beginning? I, I mean, that maybe th- we were just fucking talking about and it's cancer. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, it could be a Gulan type situation with that. We d- we don't know. But like, I mean, it's uh, we would be smart if they did. You yeah. know, I mean, at the end of the day, like is getting dirt on politicians from all around the world because it's not just American ones. It's ones mm-hmm. from all around the world is getting is getting videos of them having sex or especially having sex with underage girls important for somebody absolutely yeah you know what i mean and, and the thing is so it's like we see these they have all these fucking binders they have these binders in the goddamn safe we find out from the fbi agent that they left they didn't have a search warrant for the safe oh my god get that this makes no sense so when they uh stormed the townhouse right they literally like pfft, break like you have the photo right. of right they they uh collect a bunch of stuff oh my god sorry hold on one second they collect a bunch of stuff from uh they have a warrant that covers everything they they take photographs of everything they this is where we see these like you know this this closet that has this huge shelf with all these binders right they get into one of i think it's like the fifth floor Mm -hmm. uh bathroom which is where the safe is maybe it's the third floor can't remember it's third um they apparently they say their warrant didn't cover the contents of the safe you gotta get the Safe in the warrant, mm-hmm. but I guess because they had never they, been in there, they don't know there is a safe. I think maybe, and so maybe it requires like yeah. maybe it requires like an extra notation. If you just like lock a door, yeah, they need another warrant. Exactly, I don't know. I have no maybe, idea. I have no idea. So rather than which is this is typical protocol, posting up an agent like next to the safe, being like, "Cool, you go down to the courthouse, get a warrant that covers this. I'm gonna stay here, and make sure nothing goes missing." They're like, okay, Mr. Epstein, we're gonna go get the warrant. We'll see you later. They fucking bounce out of there. They they go back like five days later. Yeah. And they're like, okay, we got the warrant. Oops, all the contents of the safe are missing. They call Jeffrey Epstein's lawyer 
Mr. Khan, I believe mm-hmm. was his name. And he's like, oh, don't worry about it. I got it. We moved it to my offices. I'll bring you the contents of the safe in these two suitcases. What the fuck? I know. And so literally no one knows what happens knows. to the yeah. contents of that safe in those five days. Five fucking days. The feds getting the warrant, like breaking into the not breaking in, but entering the townhouse. And then when they received the two suitcases from Epstein's lawyer with the contents of the safe. The, now, the gal, the good looking FBI agent, mm-hmm. I just given her a little nod. She says, oh, I think it was everything, but we don't know it was on those CDs. There might mm-hmm. be a CD. I don't know what's on the fucking CD. Mm-hmm. I would I. So wait, I need a quick just to visualize for our listeners. Yes. We need a quick timeline. So they break on. They break into the townhouse. Mm-hmm. The FBI is Epstein arrested. He's at this in point? jail. At this he's point. in jail. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. In jail. He's so, arrested at Teterboro in New Jersey. He flies in. And I mean, it's clearly prearranged. Right. Uh, he flies in and they arrest him. They take him in uh, from the airport. So mm-hmm. now you have all of his cronies dealing with the cleanup. They probably know like, okay, if we get raided, this is what we're doing. Exactly. This yeah. is their his lawyer knows to do that. Okay. So then FBI goes in, they see the safe. Now, isn't, what is the story about them cutting into a safe or they, they used said a that saw. They had a saw with them. Yeah. So did they cut into the safe before they had the warrant? That's that's so, a really good that's question. Actually, uh, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I believe how did they, so, yes, they because did. in the photographs that they took, which they showed at the uh, you right. know uh, during this, all of the contents of the safe had been emptied. So they cut. This is what I think happened. They cut into it. They take photograph. They take. I don't think they have an infant. They took an inventory of it. And his lawyers say, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, your warrant, your warrant doesn't actually cover the contents so of the safe." Yeah, because his. Lo- I'm sure his it. lawyer was there. Yeah. yeah so yeah, they yeah. probably cut into the safe lawyer they once they realize they're doing yeah. the raid lawyer comes in can't yeah, touch yeah, the yeah. safe they've yeah. already cut into the safe in and order there's to a, there's a photograph of all the contents of the safe right. on top of the safe so they're trying to preserve the integrity of the investigation because yeah. they, they're now dealing with you know if they make one wrong move okay all this is thrown out as evidence but if you were trying to do that i mean the thing is the usual protocol is to leave one of your guys with that shit so yeah. that precisely the thing that happened doesn't happen mm-hmm. And is that common with all safe? I mean, yeah, the, the FBI's had to gone into exactly. safe. Exactly. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. So you need a warrant for the safe. Yeah, ex- you, I guess so. And it's like, okay, the guy has a 44 room fucking mansion. You think he doesn't have a fucking sa- The Sheraton has a goddamn safe in the hotel room. Right? It's probably one of these safes that has two ways to get in. So, oh, you found the front of the safe. Yeah. Yo, buddy, Use go to the, the TSA. back side. Of the, yeah, yeah, go yeah. Go to the back side of the safe, pull everything out. I've got clear. Because in my head, I was thinking that the FBI had those discs and some poor FBI agent had to pour over all of them. Well, well a poor FBI agent did. And we oh. heard from them, too. Yeah. Also good looking gal. Yeah. Better wow. looking. Actually, I got to get first. a job at the FBI. I know. I was like, <laughs> what is going on here? Both of these chicks. Was, well, one was kind of like Megan Rapinoe, but the other was it. like, you, I, I, you I, said it. I thought she said, cut a handsome figure. No, you said she was Megan Rapinoe Wait. in a positive. So they looked. You those, didn't say it. Those with the, you were like, oh, very she's flattered. hot yeah. in a Megan Rapinoe sort of way. They're probably great for honeypot sting operations exactly. for the FBI. Um, so they actually saw what some of the CD files well, they, in the safe. No, they, they looked they, at everything. So they saw that. Well, in the initial thing, in on uh, in, when they raided on July sixth, uh-huh. they saw that he had CDs. They did not go see what was on the CDs. Oh. They did take the CDs from like the ones that he had in the binders elsewhere uh-huh. in the house, like the majority of the stuff but not the CDs or the external hard drives within the actual safe. And so they also took from his house a like giant box of just hard drives that, because here's the thing, they've got images on the CDs, but on the hard drives, that's where you got the, the you know, the you got the gigs to oh, host the videos. And so we were like, holy shit, like they confirmed like, at the trial, like it was like, you know, kind of this like murmurs throughout the courtroom, people being like, oh, my God, like they, they're going to maybe show some of this stuff. No, we come back the next morning because they adjourned that day. We come back the next morning and what they show us is um, from the CDs, 20 pictures of Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell throughout the years. Hmm. There are 38,000 <laughs> goddamn images on these and then confirmed there they also had pictures of the girls which were submitted under seal so we didn't see that mm-hmm. but like you know we had one of the girls the uh, victim number 4 talk oh, Carolyn who's going by her first name 
talk about how Sarah Kellen, one of Jeffrey Epstein's assistants, had taken nude photographs of her as a, you know, as a 14 year old in Florida, which is production of and child paid pornography. Her $600. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. Production Jeez. of child pornography. They're saying in these CD binders, there are, are printed out thumbnails corresponding to what's on the CDs, but it's like they, they also redacted all the names on the binders, which we don't. I, I have a hard time believing yeah. those were actual people's names. You know I, what I mean? Because yeah. they're giant binders the of like hundreds of categorized. CDs. Mm -hmm. All right, so then the Dewey Decimal System for yeah. child porn, but so they redacted it. There, there's a lot of shit that's been teased. lost, yeah, teased or just you know conveniently forgotten about. Mm. Well, that's the thing is with this trial is that the scope is so narrow that it's like they're like being like, yeah, we're prosecuting Ghislaine Maxwell, but that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what you see. You see the, the the ten photos of Epstein and Ghislaine at Valmoral or whatever to show that. I mean, the reason they're showing those and those are the only ones they're disclosing is to show the kind of nature of their relationship to pin down that they were intimate over decade plus that the that the of the years that the trial is actually covering. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's all that they need to prove. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Epstein is in jail now. He's uh, <laughs> at the Manhattan Correctional Facility. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Or could, was it Manhattan Correctional Center? Yeah, I think MCC? so. MCC. And, uh, so then he dies. Yada, yes. yada, yada. He's he, dead now. He's, he cut off his Zoloft and he gets, uh... <laughs> Yeah. So Billy was saying that there was, uh, Billy was bringing up details about his cellmate or his alleged uh, cellmate. Tartaglione. Uh, Tartaglione. Yeah. yeah. Who Maureen Comey prosecuted. He can't be... No, no, Maureen Comey, the prosecutor on this case, also prosecuted. But, I mean, it's SDNY, yeah. but still. Now, this guy, talk about a mob hitman. Talk about... Pfft. Talk about HGH. I don't want to hear nothing from you about him because he makes you look like a baby. Dude. I know, I know. He this guy is juicy. He's huge. That's, First of all, he's well, natty. He came out in the testimony. Oh, he is? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's the type of guy... He's the type of guy, like, this guy was a cop. He went to prison and just had to do steroids because he's a cop in prison. Oh, like, my God. Like, dude. Huge. He has the smallest head on the biggest body. His shoulders are bigger than his head. That That's picture crazy. of him with a German Shepherd, it's like, all right, dude. He loves dogs, though. Yeah, he does but love yeah, dogs. I bet he does. does not love uh, uh, yeah. My drug man does dog, dog fighting. Not him. That's yeah. what he looks like. I mean, he executed, see. I think, four guys uh, yeah, in his backyard. Execution style. And his neighbor like saw him. It was like digging the graves and was like, oh, I should call yeah, this, any I, other cop but him. Yeah. He looks like a cartoon version of a like mob, mobbed up cop hitman. Yeah. It's so crazy. Epstein, Epstein, Epstein has a suicide attempt in prison where he actually ends up having, you know, he's like, he gets fucked up. There's so much mystery surrounding this. Also, yeah. no tapes of it happening. Also, the guys. They lost the tapes. They lost, they lost these tapes. Also, the guys yeah. working that night. Yeah, they had a quick. Yes, yeah. They, and yeah, the, same as the, night on his, too, uh, the same as the night on his uh, his actual suicide. So he has the suicide attempt, and Tartaglione is like, you know, kind of under the spotlight. And then Epstein gets cleared to come back. He's like, I'm not suicidal. Well, also, by the way, on the suicide attempt, Epstein claimed that it wasn't a suicide attempt, but that he was like, it was like a hit. Yes. That, that yeah. someone was after him. Okay. And he gets put out back into a cell, no cellmate mm. that, which is really crazy because especially if a guy has just been on suicide watch, you know, you put a cellmate in there to make sure he doesn't kill himself. Yeah. But they also, you know, they use jailhouse snitches. So you put a cellmate in there anyways to see if maybe he says something. Mm -hmm. it, and the thing about Tartaglione is he's now been on trial and he wants the tape released yeah. from the night. Well, because, like, I mean, okay, say that his whole thing is right and like Epstein just tried to kill himself or someone else tried to kill yeah. Epstein. Tartaglione was kind of blamed for it. Yeah. And like, you know, embarrassed the, the prison system. And so like... Hmm. You know, he wants the tape out. They're not going to put, there's no tape. Crazy enough. Uh, wait, what was I going to say? Uh, Epstein. So Epstein killing himself, right? This is a guy who not only wanted to, you know, create a genetic program, but he wanted to freeze his brain and penis mm -hmm. yeah. like Walt yeah. Disney style. Yeah. Like he wanted to preserve his longevity. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't want to die. I don't think you do either right no i'm good no we just all put that on the record yeah, yeah. 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 We that in want to nobody yeah. wants to die here yeah but i've never been like damn i don't want to die so bad that i want my dick frozen yeah so i mean the level of narcissism that he had insane doesn't really add up thinking with that's how himself. he like got really in with a bunch of silicon valley guys because they're all psycho like life extendoid transhumanist like transhumanist mm -hmm. stuff yeah. like with you know the google guys or musk or you know all those guys that are so into this idea of we're gonna we're gonna some 
someday be able to upload our consciousness onto a kind of like, I don't know, sponge type thing. Yeah. So, you know, we'll be able to live forever, which means In also we can reanimate yeah. our yeah. consciousness <laughs> while keeping our head and dick, I guess. So this is not the kind of behavior from a guy who kills himself like two weeks after getting arrested. Yeah. Right. Also, and the, the, What's the name of the title of the person who does uh, autopsies? Uh, Corner, medical Corner, examiner. Corner, yeah. medical. Didn't he resign? He like, just resigned, but I mean, who? Uh, you yeah. know, it, it's weirdly enough. They actually, the family had a coroner. They hired a coroner too, who also was maybe involved with stealing a piece of JFK's brain hmm. and also did. Yeah. Weird guy. Um, but uh, he, who said it was like, you know, that he thought it was murder because so Epstein's actual death. I mean, in jail, they take your fucking shoelaces in jail, right? They're like, damn, how would you kill yourself in jail? Hang yourself. Let's make it really hard to do that. So, mm. like, they've thought about this. And this is the fucking MCC. El Chapo is here, right? Mm. Notoriously a guy who suffers from depression that has self-harmed. Mm. Um, and, you know, they, they're like, they don't make sheets in jail that are, like, good for hanging yourself mm. with, right? They've thought of that. Somehow Jeffrey Epstein, there's pictures that came out of his cell after, uh, uh, like, like eight months after mm -hmm. after he died, that show like fifty. She it looks like a fucking Bed Bath and Beyond in it. There's like fifty sheets that he's somehow got. He had like a linen closet in there. Yes, yeah. and they expect us to believe that he fucking kneeled down in a sick mockery of Islamic prayer and thrust himself forward with sufficient force as to snap his own fucking neck. If you've seen The Wire, that's how they um, do it in The Wire. That's, yeah. how, that's with a belt tied to like the door, yeah, yeah. and then he just leans forward. Yeah. yeah. But that's, you don't break that bone in your neck exactly. by doing it that way. No, yeah. And don't. so you strangle, mm -hmm. right? That's the thing a lot of people don't understand about hanging is at the gallows, your neck's getting snapped. Done. You're dead. If you're hanging yourself at home, you're just choking to death. Oh, yeah. Boy. I know. Mm -hmm. Not my way of doing it. Yeah. So, I mean... Big T would speculate Hillary Clinton did it herself. Nah, Hillary's too stupid to pull something like that off. <laughs> she doesn't remember enough. That's the thing when people talk about like Hillary Clinton killing all these people. Mm. She she was so incompetent. She literally lost an election to Donald Trump. Yeah. But she's somehow able to kill like 15 people. Which no, I, Hillary, Hillary. I could fuck her ass up if she came at me. Yes. <laughs> she did have a willful intent to destroy America and the American way of life. She was just too stupid to do it. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Yeah, I agree with that. I, yeah. I'm telling you, you guys would get along famous. Yeah. This is great. Uh, all right, so so Epstein's dead. Uh, case closed. Dead, case closed. Jelaine gets arrested after being on the lam for a while. Mm-hmm. About a year to the day. Yeah. So how, how'd they find her? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know. There's some speculation that they knew for a long time. Yeah, I that. she was that. there. She was like, you know, Cozying up with her man. Yeah. Wait, wasn't she in Ohio at some point? Or, no, no, it was crazy. rumored that she was there in Ohio. There was like a bunch of rumors going around that about I think where her she team was. spread. Was her, there yeah. a picture of her? Like a, no. In, 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 in so there's a picture that came out of her at an In and Out. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that was like obviously. It was doctored, the one in right? Studio City too. Uh, I don't I've think it was doctored. Yeah. It's yeah. a question about when it was taken. It oh, could yes. have been a photo that was taken. Who knows when? I thought for some reason she was on that Harper Lee thing where she was up in New England. Oh somewhere yeah, 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 yeah. They're in saying the cabin. Like, yeah. No, they no. So she well she was, but yeah. they, so they there was a photo that came out like shortly after Epstein died or got arrested, but like around that time of her going like this at an In and Out with a book open, which by the way, no one's reading at the Studio City. No. Anymore. I've been to that In and Out. There was not a lot of No one's like, mm, I'd love to just go snuggle up by myself with a book. Yes. Yeah. In and Out's probably the worst meal to eat with. Just yeah, like exactly. the sauce yeah. and grease yeah, animal exactly. style. Just like yeah. Reading one hand. You're dripping a down. Makes Doesn't that so the book <laughs> this is very important. The book is flat. Like we can't see what's on the spine of the book. Yeah. We can't read anything about the book. We can just see that she's reading a book. But there's a few things that are weird about the photo. Well the title gets uh slipped to the to the guy writing the story by the person who submitted the photo to them to the gossip pages or whatever and they say the title is the life and death of cia, CIA operatives. operatives a book by a man named ted gupp yes. which is a horrible name yeah you can so That's one job where name. you can put a pseudonym and you would use Ted, Ted Gupp. Ted Gupp. Yeah. yeah. Billy, figure out what that's but so for. There was a bunch of speculation about why she would be, why would she be telling tabloids that she's reading a book called The Life and Death of CIA Operatives? Perhaps herself was trying to send a message to mm. someone 
to help her out because she saw perhaps her own demise in front of her. Yeah. So, but there's they try to date the photo by putting photoshopping in a um movie poster for the movie Good Boys, which was I, I no I feel like no one saw it. it was a Seth Rogen movie. No, I don't remember that. It's like super bad, but for tweens. Yeah, it okay. was like it was like they were like, like yeah, what if they like. like Photoshop. Oh yeah, that like was that boy was bad, pedophile weird. movie. Right? <laughs> Who's the yeah. audience? Because like people are like, okay, like a fifteen year old like trying to get laid for the first time. Like I relate to that. I was stupid in high school, but it's like an eleven year old trying to get pussy. It's like <laughs> nobody wants to see. It was like about it was about like three yeah. like like really young kids trying to get laid, and like it just, just did not. Yeah, it was yeah, nobody. That, it's like very I don't weird. really yeah. want to see an eleven year old like do that i don't think i think like i don't think yeah there's got an 80 percent on rotten tomatoes damn well, audience or or critics uh, <laughs> it's a good question yeah this this went to dvd real quick yeah Audi- uh tomato meter 80 audience score 80 what is lc whoa have? damn the rare parody yeah um but uh well they photoshopped that poster into a bus stop behind her because that poster was never actually at that bus stop to try to because that movie was coming out right when like they, they released the photo to try to make it seem like she was in L.A. at that moment. What if it was looks like a horrible spawn con gone awry? <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, like, like some Seth Rogen's like, we like, got to put it behind the It's like, OK, I got a great idea. I could actually We're going to take them. the pedo movie, yeah, put yeah, it yeah. in the pedo photo. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Real That's actually really. Yeah, it is really smart. Isn't that the story behind all those clown sightings? They yeah, yeah, it was it. it was, um, Oh, for sure. Every uh, dude, every every thing that you think is gonna be cool ends up being spawned. It is. Is everything is a psyop? It's just done by a marketing team. It's yes. a horrific, like I don't know, Van Nuys office. So, so our movie guys here, Jeff D. Lowe gave it a seventy-seven. Ken Jack gave it a sixty-nine. The audience here scored it a seventy-three. Which for them is like pretty. That's good. pretty good. They're, they're pretty hard. They're the sticklers show. about that. I'm and gonna the, uh, yeah, have some, have some difficult conversations with those boys later. But so she she after this photo comes out, we don't hear anything from her except there's rumors. She's now married, which is not officially confirmed, but she's married to a guy named Scott Borgeson, who is uh, a classic Boston boy. You know, he runs a, a, a like shipping intelligence company, which is basically uses like satellite data to track where ships are going. So in order can... to like make like big. You know, big bets on the stock market. Yeah, exactly. I think that was an it's episode of billions. I think yeah, they yeah, had, yeah, like yeah. the shipping, sure. the the visualization of the yeah, map. Yeah, he there. feels very billions. Uh-huh. Yeah, he has not His been vibe. at the trial. Which, by the way, if I, to my future wife, if I am ever arrested on sex trafficking charges, you have to go to the trial. Yeah, you have to just yeah. so, show some support. So just one day. What is this? If go to the uh, open. <laughs> well, just like I don't know. There's a, that even that you should, never. That's... Life's fucking crazy, Liz. You know, you once you gamble, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Okay. Like I've always said, you take your research one step too far. Exactly, <laughs> Pete. Uh, fucking Jesus Christ, can't remember his name. I'm too hungry. Uh, fucking guitarist of the Who. Oh, Townsend. Yeah, Townsend. Yes, that, that was a weird story, wasn't? Didn't he get off? Like he, he got off. Yeah, his he his was excuse like, was I was molested when I was a kid, so I was doing research on child pornography. Yeah, and they were like. You know what? He plays a pretty mean windmill guitar. Yeah, like Bob exactly. O'Reilly. I mean, I was doing up. research. Yeah. He's like, I what forgot is... what it looked like. I don't know. That I was, mean, his, excuse. was his excuse. I don't think that, that should be an okay excuse. No, no, no. So she gets arrested at this place, and they say that her phone is wrapped in tin foil, and that was fuck. I forgot about that detail. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was really focused on the interiors of the home. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it's true. Yeah. Very interesting. So she'd been hiding out there the entire time, or so we we think um, with armed security guys with mm-hmm. Uzis and suits. And uh, she's basically, she's been the MDC in Brooklyn. So she's a little more street. Than yeah. A little, yeah. little, little gritty. She's a girl. So she goes to Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah, I got it. Yeah. She, yeah. So w- wait, what part of Brooklyn is that in? Is that a cool part? Gowanus or so below Gowanus. Okay. Is that up and coming? Can we call that up and coming? Yeah. I don't know shit Everything about Brooklyn. Everything in Brooklyn is like, up and coming. Who knows? I've lived in New York for five years. I've been to Brooklyn maybe five times. Yeah. You know what I just saw, by the way, in the East Village? I was telling Brace about this. There's a guy running for like some kind of office or whatever in East Village for his name is Harvey Epstein. Wow. Which okay. is like maybe the worst name you could yeah. have. Harvey Epstein. For running for office. Uh-huh. Smollett Theron. But here's the thing I was thinking, because I was like, oh, because you can't just you can't like split it up. 
actually your best choice is to put them together because you can't be like vote Harvey. People are gonna be like what? Uh huh. And you can't be like vote Epstein. Yeah. So you got to do the Harvey Epstein so people know it's a rough. It's combo. not. You any gotta, of the other guys You gotta add in a middle initial Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's gotta be like Harvey That actually J. makes it Yeah Harvey J. Epstein Actually sounds more fucked up though <laughs> a, a little bit yeah, yeah Like a little bit richer Hey maybe. Harvey J. Epstein Nice to meet you It's uh -huh. like ooh When I moved to LA I told everybody that I was there Because my uncle Like I'd taken over My uncle's company and then I would like slowly let it like come out in the conversation that my uncle was Harvey Weinstein <laughs> and people would all, no one ever didn't believe me. People would always be like, Oh, that's cool. Awesome. You're yeah, doing wow. that. I'm like, yeah, I, I put a lot of women in, in charge, like things, yeah. turn things around in LA. Everyone's used to just hearing like horrific shit in yeah. conversations that they know not to just like, they're just like, Oh, interesting. Cool. So it sounds like you're making some moves. Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's link. Let's collaborate. <laughs> yeah. So she's been in jail ever <laughs> since. And it took a fucking long time for the trial to get started. And you know, yeah. it is, I mean, it's supposed to start in the summer and now, I mean, we're in the middle of it. We're yeah, literally in the middle of the literally trial. Literally in the middle. So we've got how many more weeks? <sighs> Good question. Okay, so this was very weird because it was said they anticipated six weeks. Yes. Now, right before the break, the prosecution rested, which means they presented their case for people who don't know what that means. Then the defense goes. The defense to the um, to the judge was like, yeah, we anticipate... Uh, you know, bringing in witnesses the 18th, 19th, and the 21st, I believe, or yeah, 17th, 18th, and 21st, whatever. It's Thursday, Three Friday, days. maybe into Monday. And so the judge goes, "Okay, so closing arguments will be on the 21st." Yeah, and it was like, "What? Yeah. This thing was supposed to go until January, and you're telling me now that the defense is only going to have a case for two days, and that they're going to like that they're going to." Yeah, you know, have the like, jury start deliberations before Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's it's like a shocker, basically. But it's also a shocker because, like, if you're the defense, I don't know what you're thinking. I think that they're probably going to try and go for a mistrial at some point because they think that they're that maybe they'll get her on one of the charges. Because the last thing you want is sending this jury into del deliberations before a Christmas holiday because every juror is going to be like, "Fuck, I don't want to come back." Yeah, like yeah. I want to spend Christmas with my family. My I'm not coming back on Monday. Like, yeah. what do we got to do to speed this up? So there's no like single holdout who's like, I know she's innocent. Let's get back here the day after Christmas. Like, mm -hmm. they'll just you know everyone folds into you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, just I mean, a just bad human nature. bad move. So I don't like. It's almost like you would think the defense would just be like, oh, let's call like ten other witnesses. Yeah, just yeah. to like well, defense keep this is thing moving. officially called for 34 witnesses on the witness list. I don't know how many of those are actually going to get accepted. They're asking for anonymity for three of them. Mm. They're using that justification is that three of the um, three of the accusers. We've heard from four accusers like uh, on the stand. Three of them have been anonymous or semi anonymous. Although during the uh, during the trial. The defense lawyer, in fact, just one lawyer from the defense, a guy named Jeffrey Pagliucci, or we call him Pagliacci because it's easier to say. Because he's a clown. Him. Exactly. Uh, he is awful. Like he's by far the worst he's one they so have. He's awful. And he's obviously unlikable, so they make they deploy him to do the unlikable stuff. But he has said the, the names of uh, witnesses several times, like, it, you know, it contravening, like, the anonymity order. Yeah. And it's like one time he did it three times in a day. Yeah, it was really a girl's bad. first and last He's name. He's a moron. Yeah, total moron. The man's a moron. But you know, it's 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 such a. Uh, it was a shocker for a lot of people that the prosecution was resting so soon. We yeah. expected it to like everyone in the courtroom, even like long time like courtroom reporters, not even like you know I write about crime or like guys whose job is going to like SDNY every single day. Mm -hmm. They were like, wait, they're resting after yeah. like literally less than two weeks. Yeah. Weird uh, on a giant case. Weird. So, I don't know. I, I'm hopeful that she gets convicted of something. Yeah. Like you guys said you think she probably will be. Yeah, yeah. I think so. It'd be tough to, to I see also, her skate just off all this. Like, you know, they they did. They took a lot of time picking this jury, and you know, I think the defense probably did the best they could. But I just do not believe that there's a single guy in New York who doesn't know who Jeffrey Epstein is. Yeah. And yeah. I just think yeah. a lot of people probably, you know. I just don't, I don't know how you get out of that. I mean, I don't know how you walked home after the first day of trial and didn't see she's guilty on the cover of the New York Post <laughs> at like every fucking, you know, bodega out there, mm -hmm. you know? It was I like didn't the, see that it, one. I, it was, but, yeah. The Post rocks. Yeah. I mean, do you think that the trials sort of not revealed anything else yes. and that's really what the defense may have wanted to ensure? 100. I mean, we got little nuggets 
Mm. I feel like like we got the we found out that there's way more like digital footage than we could have ever imagined. Jeez. Uh, and we found out more inside like Ghislaine flying on Epstein's jet. You know, that's like we found out an earlier time where they're confirmed together. Mm. But like that, those are, you know, that's not a lot to go on there. And yeah. so they, they're not like they're keeping this so close to the chest. They're barely naming anybody that hasn't been like the like they've, Prince Andrew's been named a few times. Yeah. But very tactically and almost always by the defense. Yeah. He I mean, doesn't you sweat. To, yeah. Do you remember like yes. for the prosecution when they're they've got it? They're trying to nab this lady. The last thing they want to do just from like a pure prosecution standpoint, regardless of whatever else other conversations are having above that right mm-hmm. the last thing they want to do is like bring in a bunch of like celebrity names that are going to distract the jurors from just like this lady trafficked young girls like a b c you don't want to bring in a bunch of like and there's this guy and there's that guy and there's you know what i mean yeah so it makes sense that they're keeping just from a like prosecution standpoint keeping it this narrow but it makes it so i think that like for us you know we've been following this case for so long and we really do know the ins and outs of it very, very intimately. So even just knowing from the trial that Epstein and Ghislaine knew each other prior to when has ever been reported, that alone is like a big bomb yeah. for us to find out. Mm-hmm. But it's not the like, you know, frazzle drip video that people were hoping to see of Huma and Hillary engaging in baby eating contests yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I would like yeah, to see yeah, that yeah. too. Um, well, I, I actually have to go. I've got a show that I'm uh, two minutes late you're to tape do right another now. show? You guys can wrap it. Well, oh my God, you're it's psycho. A, it's a trivia thing that I have to do. Mm, Jesus um, Christ. You guys can continue going here because I don't know if you've reached All right, Bible. guys. <laughs> Billy, Billy's loving it. I'm not responsible for anything that Billy says. Um, but uh, before you guys go, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. It was a pleasure to again, meet you. This was awesome. And uh, listen to their podcast. What's the? Uh, where does it do you guys the most good for them to listen to? Um, subscribe to their Patreon. Oh yeah, the Patreon, of course. Well, yeah, Patreon. Um, but other than that, I mean, we're we're doing all the we're doing all of the trial coverage, like the day to day stuff, is all free and out there. Yeah. And in general, we do one free episode a week, mm-hmm. um, or mo- try to, and then one paid episode a week. But so we're gonna do all free trial coverage, and then some other stuff around the trial we're doing on the Patreon only. Okay, check them out, Trunon and Billy. You want to keep going? Yeah, I just have one just last question. More. Okay, yeah, what yeah, is yeah. it? All right, All right, thank you guys. Though. So, oh yeah, can I just see the sketch uh, before I go? Oh whoa, yeah. <gasps> oh, that's beautiful. Oh, this is incredible. Okay, we're that's gonna be the first macrodosing NFT. Oh <laughs> yeah, you have to. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'll make the macrodosing Coinbase wallet or whatever. My last question. Okay, I am a average American. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing all about this. Please, if in any way possible, can you try to explain that there is no QAnon Pizzagate, even though all of this like seems like the tip of the iceberg for it? Is there any way you can ground me in reality and give me any hope that like there isn't that crazy adrenochrome stuff going on? No, that's not real. Oh, no, I no. So, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I th- I mean personally how would you rationally explain what's going on? Well the hard thing is is like yeah it does kind of seem like there's a giant sex ring that like is behind not only just our government but like we're other government. governments too. Uh the only thing is is like I don't think they're eating the babies. <laughs> uh I mean the, the thing is QAnon that's that what that's what makes it so difficult is like QAnon has some elements of truth to it. Right. Like QAnon people were talking about Jeffrey Epstein. Stuff. Yeah. And like, uh, you know, so it, it's like, OK, yeah, like there is that. And that's what makes it hard to disentangle for a lot of people is because like, mm-hmm. well, these guys were talking about it first. So like, why isn't all this other stuff they mm-hmm. say true? I personally think Pizzagate and QAnon were put out there by Bannon because a makes it really good to hit Hillary Clinton and being like this bitch literally ate a fucking baby in Ward's face, Mm -hmm. Um, which I've also met people who say they saw that video, which is bullshit. I went to a QAnon convention. The people said they saw that. Yeah. Do you believe them? No. Okay. (laughs) Because I'm like, how come No, you didn't see that? That video doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, But, you know, it's it's hard because there is like there is this very real stuff. And then there's this other shit that like really muddies the waters. I honestly wouldn't know how to really convince somebody because I've talked to a lot of QAnon people 
And like, and I went to a QAnon convention. I stayed at the hotel with them. I party wow. with them. Um, party? Yeah, yeah. Some of them were tight. Some of them were not so tight. Uh, but yeah, no, I party with like Michael Flynn and shit. Like I was, I was going, oh, shit. yeah, it was, we went to church with him. Crazy. That wasn't partying, but, um, it more like, how would you explain this? Basically guy got super powerful, yeah. just had so much power, so much influence. He was just like, fuck it. Like I can have sex with anybody I want. You know what? I'm going for the forbidden that like, how do you explain it? I mean, I, I don't know. I think that there's like, I think that there is a component to the ultra wealthy where they are so used to doing things outside the bounds of anything, right? We talk about how Epstein is moving all this money. He knows what fraud is. He doesn't know what fraud is. He's like, he's moving money around in order to like escape certain aspects that that sort of like um, refracts through their life they're so everyone is so used to being outside of certain sorts of like social i don't know rules norms laws whatever because they are in every other aspect of their life they are above those Mm. sorts of things that it extends to the way they conduct themselves in other things Mm. um including i think whatever his weird sexual predilections were i mean he talks about like how he has to have sex like three times a day and Ghislaine herself says that she, you know, Jeffrey has all of these, um, you know, sexual needs that need to be fulfilled. So she, like, procures girls for him. And they, like, even in, even in the testimony from these young girls, right? This is something I was really tripped up on. There's a couple of the girls who talk about how they meet Ghislaine for tea. And they, like, they both have tea together. And then later on, she's they're brought into this massage room where then they, you know, engage in these, like, sexualized massages yeah. for Jeffrey. And there's this perverse, I mean, un- unintentionally, right? But it does have this perverse ritualized aspect to yeah. it, right? Not that they're sitting there detailing that it's literally, there's, like, a prescription for this, right? Mm-hmm. But there are these aspects to these things that kind of, I don't know how else to describe it. Like, no, I think ritual, I think ritual does a really good yeah, job Yeah, and of it. so you see these, you know, I don't know. There, there are these. All of this exists outside of the bounds of what the world is for the rest of us, because these people live in a completely and totally Jeez. different universe. Well, I was hoping that you guys could give me something to help me sleep better at night. Well, unfortunately, I, I think the problem is, is like, you know, we we live in a world where people basically can get away with this for decades, and like all of their friends will overlook it. In fact, participate in with them, and like. It, it is an, in, an extreme indictment. I think that's part of what, you know, sort of attracts people so much to it is it indicts like the entire political and business class in not only this country, but in a lot of other mm. countries as well. Mm. And because it's like, oh, well, these people, if they weren't participating in themselves, they were either in governments that were covering it up. Their friends were doing it. They were in that milieu. They're all like they're all in it together. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well. Thank you guys so much for coming on. That was an amazing expose on. Thank you for having us. Epstein. Thanks for having us. I think, I think we really hit a homer on this Epstein episode. I would agree. We're we're finally gonna get him arrested. <laughs> Take his ass. Oh, down. do you think he's? Do you think? Okay, do you think he's alive? Liz does. No, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I just say stuff like that because it's funny. No, I, I don't think he is. But I don't think he's ass. alive. Yeah. You think they no. killed his ass? Yeah. yeah. Like, He's Body not worth double. it. Yeah. No, I mean, they might have killed another guy that looks like him, too. But yeah, they, 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 yeah they, they, he's dead for sure. There's yeah. that. I mean, those fucking, you know, I'd be more sympathetic to it, but they came out to this fucking uh, autopsy pictures. And I'm like, you can't fake that. That motherfucker is. Oh, that's they, him. You saw. There's autopsy photos. Yeah. Where can you find those? They got released like early last year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. They're nasty. Thank you guys so much. Absolutely. Perfect. Go listen Thank to you. True and On. They have the best stuff. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.